welcome to Game 32 of the Lincoln Cast. I am the uh, announcer for you, and we have starting forward, Shinboy. Wait, starting forward? Yes, in rear guard is New Brahma, what? and defensive I, I lineman don't get it. is Durin. I'm, Shinboy, what you been playing? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm so confused, this all came too quickly. You said you um, love my announcer voice, and I'm being an announcer. I, I I'm your host, Liberal no. for the week of December 8th, 2012. Are you announcing... No, he's wrestling? like. I, I told you. I told you minor league baseball. I was confused Whatever. when he said this was game number thirty-two. Baseball? Yeah, game number thirty-two. Hey, thirty-two of the, of the Lincoln Cast season, obviously. Oh, oh the Lincoln. Oh, oh, okay. Are we, so we're still in season one then. Yeah, and yeah. we have a really yeah, a pretty long, long season. season. Well, it, uh, yeah. I guess we must. I told him. I told him baseball one. has really long seasons. Yeah, before oh. before the game came out was preseason. Okay. Season two will be when the expansion hits. I mean, gotcha. if there is one. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes okay. Yeah, it's makes, actually it makes starting to make sense. Okay. Defensive lineman, that's baseball, right? Yeah, that's little league. Uh, sure. Yeah. I I don't Scoring know goal units. about baseball. I, I, know I, I know I know pitcher and and shortstop. Oh, what about yep. that guy who like says you're out and like stuff? Oh right, yeah. Uh, um, um, I think yeah. that's hockey. Um, oh no, yeah. no, 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 that's not hockey. Fuck yeah, because he says he says you've been traveling on the ice. No, obviously, that's speed skating. Oh yeah, you're right. So oh, now we're boy. going into Olympic sports. The really sports area aficionado. of expertise. What you been up um, to? Scribble Knots Unlimited is what I've been up to. <gasps> oh yeah, I love I love that name. It's a I game I want to play, Nots but it was on the DS, like, so I never got yeah. to play it. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, same. I love that Nots name, is... but it, it's it's saddening too because where can you go after Unlimited? Like they this can't, they, infinite. They can't infinite. make another one. Infinite. Scribble Knots uh, well, Universe. You, you Double can't really go anywhere on Steam. Infinite plus one. You could go other places on the Nintendo platforms, but you can't really go anywhere on Steam because of the whole workshop support. Yeah. True. True. I mean, that yeah. does make it unlimited. <clears throat> That's it. Scribble Knots is done. No more Scribble Knots after this. Ever. Ever. Sad. Ever. And Steam- yeah, so cool. we can just say Steam killed Scribble Knots forever. Yeah, pretty now much. Killed Scribble Knots. Gabe Newell. Yeah. Killed Gabe Scribble Newell, Knots. what are you doing? You've killed Scribble Knots. Why are you making another Valve console? But that That's that's that another subject for another That's day. another subject entirely. Yeah, Scribblenauts okay. is great. I I had never played a Scribblenauts game before, not owning any form of DS. So this is like a brand new, crazy world that I'm living in, where I can just type anything and it magically appears. Well, this one's kind of crazy compared to the the prior ones too, because this one actually has like a, a full on, like, sort of openish world. Um, no, oh, yes and no. The way it's broken down is there are set levels. But there's set different hub worlds, and the little areas are within those hub worlds. And there's missions in both the hub worlds and the sectioned off areas. Okay. It's kind of weird. The hub worlds are the ones that are gated. It's still, I mean, it's still more open than, like, the previous games. Previous games, it was literally, like, broken up into levels. Yeah, like, this is, um, they are gated by, like, the stars that you need to get. So you need, like, eight stars to get World 2, but once you get into World 2... You can go into any of the little sub areas at any time. You don't need to do them in a specific order. Hmm. It's pretty neat. Okay, okay so as, as Noob was asking prior to, to our recording, um, can you still just make Cthulhu for everything and win? I don't know about win. You can make some version of Cthulhu and probably get pretty far. Mm. Like, I needed mm. to make some guy laugh, and I made Dancing Cthulhu, and it worked pretty well. <laughs> so, nice. my biggest it question go for crazy the- while laughing. <laughs> My biggest question for Scribble Knots is: When you type something in, how how likely is it that it just won't be on the database? Well, like how large is that database? I don't know. I haven't really come across anything that wasn't like um, restricted by licensing that mm-hmm. wasn't there. Right. So, hmm. That's so like, pretty much everything except for licensed characters, which people are getting around on the Steam Workshop by naming Solid Snake, Snake Eater, and Iron Man, Iron Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so they can't actually name people like that on Steam Workshop then? No, because it's against the the agreement for the game itself. Oh. You're not allowed to like include licensed characters at all. Yeah. It's weird though because there's a, the most popular ones. You look at it and it's all licensed characters, but with names changed, obviously. And then a whole bunch of TF2 things that they didn't bother. It just straight up says TF2 Red Demo Man. <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed. I'm assuming just because it's Valve. Yeah, Valve's like yeah, yeah whatever. Mm-hmm. We'll We're charge hand for over it. Fist off what you guys about anyway. real life people like um, 
Kim Il Sung or any other dear leader. If you want to create your dear leader, you probably could and just name him dear leader and it will be fine. Yeah. I mean, North Korea probably isn't going to sue for copyright. Probably it's not. great because to be fair, they might attack for copyright. And there's a whole bunch of um, properties you can change, whether they're hostile and everything. And you can also there's just a checkbox that all it just says is like um, gravity applies or something like that. <laughs> so you can uncheck that, and he'll just start oh, floating everywhere. So you can make like uh, flying I'm, great. I'm leader. imagining, I'm imagining uh, Kim Il Sung somehow buys the game in Steam. Like he's the only like he's the only one who has access to it. Tries to get that dead. name. I just can't. Yeah, and it's like, that's the name I already taken by so-and-so in Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next it's thing like, you no! know, nukes on Canada. That'd be yep. good. That's how Canada meets its demise. Scribble knots. Yeah. Scribble knots. <laughs> Man, I don't So is it, like, really sandboxy? You can literally do anything you want? Because that's, like, my um, dream game. I mean, yes and no. It has to actually be something that would work, but, like, going back to the hospital level that I was talking about before... I don't remember if it was before we started recording, probably. Um, the one doctor's like, oh man, I need some form of instrument to perform surgery on this dude. And I'm just like, how about a chainsaw? And I gave him a chainsaw and it worked. So, no, I mean like <laughs> in the way like you can fight or you can spawn five Hitlers and five Joseph Stalins and make them fight. Oh yeah, if you oh, man. create those things in the object editor and set the properties right, you can totally do that. That's crazy. That sounds, yeah. oh, I just, that sounds it's only 30 like bucks. the biggest time killer in the yeah, world. Yeah, that's probably the craziest thing about all of it. Like, it's only thirty dollars. Like, that is yep, insane. No, it's nuts. I was going back and forth. Um, I think I talked to you during on Steam about it. I was like, I don't know if I want to get this. I might wait till it goes on sale. And then you were just like, it's probably not going to go on sale. And I was like, mm, you're right. And the next day, I ended up buying it. I just came yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, because I mean, like, it, it just released like what two weeks ago at this point. Yeah, or last week, something like that. Um, yeah. The, the you know the next sale is going to be you know the the holiday sale that's coming up in probably a couple that's of weeks. like in a week. It's yeah. way yeah. way too soon, too close to that release date. There, there's no way. And if it does go on sale, it, it probably wouldn't be more than like ten or fifteen percent. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm gonna just for funsies gonna try and S rank it because the achievements <laughs> uh, seem pretty simple. The achievements are pretty much just like beat all the big challenges and sub challenges, and like that seems like it'd be fun to do. But the only thing I'm worried about. Um, is at some point later on, the game's logic will not match my logic, and I just won't be able to finish something, and I'll just be sitting there for hours, like, what will work in this situation? doesn't work here. <laughs> Cthulhu doesn't work, what the hell? <laughs> Tube Cthulhu does not work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Some things are already yeah. kind of weird, I noticed, like, not so much with the logic of it, but how the mechanics work. Like you create something, then you like drag it to something to apply it to it. So like there's one part where you need to make a car look like a fire engine. So I'm just like, red paint. And I summoned it and dragged it over to the car, and it didn't work. But then one of the like firemen just sort of walked over to the car, happened to see the red paint, picked it up, and then it worked. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know there's a lot of instances, instances where like you can't directly interact with things. You have to make the, the people there interact with them. Yeah. I, I, know, I, I, saw, saw that, I think I saw that on the quick game. look. Yeah. I mean, me not knowing that, I was kind of scratching my head for a minute, wondering why my obviously flawless logic was not working. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But it was cool because I think my favorite one, there was a penguin who was an art thief. And he's like, hey, I need help getting past these guards so I can steal this art. So, you know, right click on him, use the notebook or notepad, add adjective. And I just made him invisible. And he just walked Oh, out. that's too simple. <laughs> that's too simple. <laughs> I wonder if you could do something like Jedi Mind Trick. Probably. Uh, not Jedi Mind Trick, because that would be copyright. Oh, right. Um, hey, with the Steam Workshop, anything. And, that, and that's probably... And that's, a few letters. Well, well, see, no, and that's probably the hardest thing about playing through Scribble Knots is a lot of the things that first pop into your head are, are things like Jedi stuff, Mind Trick, right. things that are copyrighted. You're like, yeah. well, fuck, okay, how do I how do I word this in a way that that is not copyrighted? And, and if you figure it out, generally person. it'll work. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. Well, no, that's, that's the thing. What yeah, you would probably do in that case, like I would imagine, if you created and, and there were instances like this in previous Scribble Knots games, um, not not exactly like this, but like things similar. similar. Um, yeah. Right. Where like in that in that instance, you would create like say like you'd make a a monk and it would be a dude in a robe and you'd set him down and then create like a laser sword and <laughs> give it to him and then he would basically be a Jedi. <laughs> basically, but the thing I like about um. This game with the addition of Steam Workshop is that it'll remain current, meaning that like if something shows up in pop culture, 
I can just yeah. wait about a week and odds oh, are God, is Sai in, in that there? game. Don't tell me Sai, Sai is in there. Sai God, is in there. That's where I was going with this. Damn it. <laughs> Damn also, it. Also, there is a binder that you can place on the ground and hit open and a woman will pop pop out. It is quite literally oh, no. a binder really? of women. Are you serious? A That's binder crazy. full of women. That's crazy. <laughs> that is actually it's fantastic. Crazy. I am yeah. behind on pop culture, it seems. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Political stuff. Don't worry oh. about it. Awesome. Oh, wait, that's in there? <laughs> God damn it, not here. That's in there? <laughs> I don't know. I just, Holy shit. When, when when people are political, that's what they say. Ron, Ron Paul. Paul 2012? Yeah. Ron Paul. Okay. Yeah. All caps. Oh, no. Ron Paul 2012. Yeah. Scribble Knots, it's 30 bucks. It's on Steam, Steam Workshop. It's also on Wii U and I think DS. Uh, yes. Yeah, 3DS, Wii U, and PC. The but weirdest it's combination Steam Workshop. Of, of, I think this is a pretty one combination of platforms for a game to release on, really. One thing which I read I haven't had an issue with because it's not exactly a strenuous game hardware wise. Um, apparently, the game speed is tied to the frame rate, meaning mm-hmm. that if you, for some strange reason, you can only run it at 30 frames, it'll run at half speed. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, that is rough. But then again, you'd have to com- have like. If your computer can't handle this game at yeah, 60. Like, you'd have to have you'd have to have like a fucking like seven year old MacBook to not be able to run this thing at sixty. You would need like a twenty year old like home built machine <laughs> to not be able to run this. Oh man, I really want to get that game. Windows ME. I'm gonna put yeah, that on my wish list. Uh, Maybe I will. Yeah, totally I mean, if people are listening to this podcast and like, oh, I'm gonna buy it right now, don't give it like a week or two. No, no, no. That's that's what I was saying, Thurb. It's not. It, it will probably not go on sale. No, I think it will sale. go on sale, but not too. We don't degree. know. We yeah, we don't know, but it, it's it, it'll be within like the month of release. Like, yeah, very, but that said, you, you have really nothing happen. to lose. THQ's for waiting putting a stuff month. on sale. THQ, THQ is, is also just very trying close to fucking make business. money. <laughs> they're just they're putting stuff on sale everywhere. Just like, oh god, please, people, give us money. <laughs> to be fair, that that has been working. That humble bundle, THQ. Oh no, it has. That humble bundle might have saved up their stock price. A yeah, lot. that that yeah that 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 humble bundle might have actually saved that company. It's gotten but, to the point where the humble bundle is saving corporations. <laughs> where this yeah. world's coming to. That's great. That's great. It is kind of sad to see the humble bundle on there and all those amazing games that they put on there for that that group, and to see that the average price is still only like five dollars, six bucks. Yeah. Have you seen people complaining? Um, as they like to do about Humble Bundle, how they lost yes. all their credibility by hooking yep. up with yeah. a big publisher. Oh yeah, because it's no longer humble God anymore. Damn it, I guess. you guys! Well, and and uh, the thing it. is, like, I I guess I can under I could understand where people are coming from with that. If it were, if it weren't for the fact that I just love everything that THQ does, and if this means that they are able to continue on and for the next great game in the Saints Row franchise to release, like fucking more power to them. I mean, it's not no, like they're taking away your ability Humble. to donate to charity or the Humble Bundle, so I don't really see the problem here. Yeah, you know, like you, like you, you can literally give THQ. THQ. You hate you THQ, $0. donate it to charity. Congratulations. There you go. Exactly. You don't have yeah. to just complain. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people don't maybe don't realize or just blind anger or whatever, but like you don't have to give THQ any of that money. You can give them $20 towards this thing and put all of it to, to the charity. You can give or, them one cent and not give that to or, THQ. Yeah, or you can give them you like can give it all to charity and THQ and just like screw Humble Bundle. Yeah. yeah. It's like I'm also, not giving you guys any um, money. A lot of people were complaining because the minimum was a dollar. I'm like, fuck you. If you're going to pay oh, less than a dollar for like six People games. really complain that it was. Seriously? Oh my God. I still yeah, like I, how. I read uh, some guys complaining about all the, of these things. I still like the Cards Games Community Christmas pack. If you say you're like, if you say zero dollars, they yeah. basically curse you out. Like they'll send it to you, but they'll curse yeah, you out. They'll send. They'll send you like. A, Apparently, that know, thing accepted what negative amounts. Uh, Christmas pack. It what now? Apparently, Apparently that thing accepted. Accepted, it accepted negative. Yeah, I don't oh, know wow. what happened if you did it, but apparently, yeah, I was actually. Negatives. I was actually <laughs> kind of sad because they just packed when money I in, inside. <laughs> when I when I put in my order for that, um, I read like like Thurb was talking about how like you could send zero dollars and like they let you know like well it does cost us like a dollar to to make them and two dollars to ship. So like ideally at least three dollars. We think it's worth five. And I was like, okay, I'll I'll give them five dollars, assuming that they would charge me eight, because I thought the dollar and three dollars was like that's the oh, bare minimum you are going to pay this no, much. No. And so when I saw the charge for five dollars on my my um, bank account, I was like, oh well, shit. If I'd have known that, I would have I'd have gone ahead and just given Wait, them. Wait, so eight. is that pack only the Christmas cards, or is that the entire yes. thing? No, no, no. It's only oh, the Christmas so it's cards. 30, 30 cards. Okay. It's only the Christmas yeah. cards. 
So like, I was actually, I was actually kind of sad that I didn't give them as much money as I thought I did. Buy it again. <laughs> Buy it again. It's it's already sold out, isn't it? Like I think those things sell out. In like, right? yeah. I don't know. The regular I, packs sell out really really quick. Yeah, I went I went and bought it like literally as I got the email. I went I picked up. Yeah. I know how fast. Those and considering sell. that there's probably a whole bunch of scumbags who would yep. give nothing just because they can. And see, like I don't even own the actual base set. Like these will be the I, only I hope cards. They're not the making a loss out of this because if they're. Oh, I don't know. I honestly hope they don't make a loss. Out of I don't. I don't. I don't think they will. Honestly, like a lot of the people that like, yeah, those I'm sure cards for every like one, a lot more. Like three reasonable people. Yeah. Even then, I, I think they're okay $5. with making loss on just this small product. Well, yeah, especially yeah, exactly. Like this isn't a huge product, and they do have the the giant bomb um, expansion coming in the pipeline at some point as well. Well, so, and like, they like with every Christmas they they pumped out a whole new set of starter desk decks, and so yeah. people are going to be buying those. Like you know, Which, are, the, are those still available? I don't, I don't know. know. You should have gotten. They, they, they put them back in stock as soon as the Christmas one went up. You should have. Yeah, gotten I, saw, them yeah I saw that. Yeah. Well, no, see, yeah, like that's the thing. Like I couldn't afford the twenty five dollars for the main set. I can afford the Christmas oh, okay. set for now, and then eventually I'll get that that set as well. Okay. Not wanting to like a uh, uh, not wanting to. Uh, jump on what Shinboy's been playing, but like spoiler, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Cards Against Humanity. Boom. That's, Cards Against Humanity it. is fun, except I can't play it too many times. Like, yeah, too I'm short of a span because like, you get having, the same cards and it's like eh. right. Having played it a lot of the same times with the same people, it it does kind of get stale. Like things yeah. like coat hanger abortions and stuff like that. That's like oh, okay, <laughs> that's cool. I guess. <laughs> well, have you, yeah, have you guys seen the 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 online versions that, that people have kind of created? Yeah, that's what yes, we've been I've playing. Those oh, really oh, okay, okay, okay. Gaming Hub. Okay. We were playing the online version, and See, it got it. It was okay, and then they added the My Little Pony thing, and then we kind of just stopped playing. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> but See, I, I, I will play. say, I will say, like I, I've never actually played the game. Wow! Wow! But yeah, cards just cards fucking sudden silence. Play there. <laughs> playing with I, these people really is fun. actually fun, though. Well, Genuinely, the thing is, like, I never owned. I never. Yeah. I, like, I never owned the cards. Um, and then like the, I, I've known of a couple different ways you can play it online, but never really gotten into the communities that did so. It's really funny like, to play I downloaded in them, but situations where them. you shouldn't just saying, because when the power was out during the storm, all those weeks ago, I was playing with my neighbors and I won. The question was like, why am I drinking or why am I sad and drinking or something like that? And with all the flooding in my town, I won with the card flash flooding. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I, I swear to God, winning really? that game means you're just a terrible person. You don't want to be winning yep. that game. Well, see, what I'm, what I'm hoping for, now that I have this this Christmas set, and then I, I really want to try to get the base set before... I want to try to get the base set before Christmas, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, because what so I'd like to do... do for a family gathering? Yes. Oh, that's... Print out the ghetto I, I would love to play this with... Like, and just, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, even, not even kidding. I would play this with my parents. Hmm. Well, it's you have to understand my parents though. Like we I went as a, I could play with my parents. We, we went as a family I, I, to go I, I, see the. My, we went as a family to go see the South Park movie. My dad just oh, could, might not be able to understand it, so I could just blissfully say <laughs> terrible things. My my um, mom once granted she you know might have had a few drinks at that point, but did um, proclaim to my brother that she could have swallowed him. So what? <laughs> oh. What? I was a little, a little more just, open about what? stuff. What? <laughs> Are we thinking of the same like thing for swallow? Oh God, this is going a weird place. Okay, you know what? Change the subject. That's great. Change so the subject. We should play so, Cards Against uh, Humanity sometime over online. This, this entire <laughs> podcast crew. We should play Cards Against Humanity online. Should, should we even play anything sure. else? Scribble nope. Nuts. Scribble Nuts. Right on. During what you been playing? What you been up to? I have. I'm. I'm kind of sad that uh, Cynic's not here because he, he's he's kind of been keeping a tab Persona, on my. Persona. Fuck you. Fuck you. No. 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 He's been keeping a tabs on my Assassin's Creed adventures. Um, oh yeah. Last time we talked, which would have been like two weeks ago, I was in the middle of Brotherhood. Um, I have since finished Brotherhood, finished Revelations, and I'm now a few hours into Assassin's oh, Creed. Oh, is this going to turn into another Assassin's Creed talk? I'm just going to leave. No. 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 It's it's not. I'm not. I'm not super far into three. I will, however, say. That the people who have um, spoken uh, negatively about Revelations, I think either they played Revelations too long after Brotherhood, or they just are bad people because that was actually a solid game in every respect. I think they're just bad people. I, I think so. Like, th- am I th- a bad the, person the, the, for not liking Assassin's Creed at all? 
Um, eh, I mean, no, not as, I mean, I could see why somebody, I mean, with as many games that are out there, I could see why you would just skip on these games. Right. Like there, there are a lot of quality games out there. You have Hearts of Iron 3. And there are a lot of quality knows. games out there um, to play. Hey, hey, So hey. I can see why you, hey, you, know, what? you had to skip on some occasionally here and there. And I could see why you know, Assassin's Creed would be one. And especially, like, if you didn't get in kind of at least at two, it can be real hard to just jump right in. Like, there's some crazy, just fucking batshit crazy shit going on in that series at this point. And it can be I watched the ending cutscene of two, which is like, the fuck? Okay, well, that, oh, was, so that was my reaction, too, and I played actually, the entire that, game. That's what he says. No, yeah, I believe he does, actually. I think he does say, what the I'm fuck? Like, I'm like, I agree, Noah North. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's the thing about those games is, is actually, I, from what I've played so far of those games, they all have endings like that. Like, Brotherhood's ending was very what the fuck, and as was Revelations, and I, I hope that I hope that Assassin's Creed 3 lives up to that as well, but from what I've been hearing, n- not so much. Yeah. Um, I will say, however, and I'll, I'll, cut, I'll cut it off after this for the Assassin's Creed, um, but I will say... They did make some some good changes with the traversal stuff in this game. Um, however, this is also probably the most broken Assassin's Creed I've played so far. Like bug wise, like bug wise, uh, three. Yeah. Well, but like what level three of is bugs is very it? Is it like um, um, Rockstar level of bugs or more like um, Bethesda level of bugs? Um, Bethesda bugs are so charming. Yeah, no, these are um, these are more like sometimes just, unless they just constantly crash. Like things like like. Um, characters randomly like they'll show up on the mini map that they're standing there and they're not actually and then like out of nowhere they'll they'll just randomly pop into the world um and i'm talking like they were not there for a solid 30 seconds it was like a, a group of troops and like then just suddenly they just popped into the world kind of above the ground fell down onto the ground and then started walking uh, there was a harbor master that apparently was about 15 feet out into the middle of the water um so i couldn't see him he was mastering his harbor master yeah <laughs> Um, so just weird things like that. I mean, the the Assassin's Creed games have had some weird bug issues with uh, characters. Open world that, jank. Yeah, exactly. Like characters that are halfway through buildings and stuff like that. Like it happens in those games. Um, but there have been some other weird quirks here and there with this one. And, and and they made some some advancements with the traversal. But I feel like for the step forward that they took back or took with uh, with the traversal, they took about a half step back as well um, because it, it 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 feels a little bit too quick, like the movement. And so you. you much more easily lose control of your character and can end up jumping off of something you been, didn't mean to do. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I... Did, did I go over this last um, podcast? I, like, I, I talked about how I've been playing Assassin's Creed 3, but like the things I don't like about that game are the things that made it awesome in like 1 and 2. Basically, like you can't... like if You, you can't get into a fist fight. Um, which is silly, I know, but... It, well, it, no, it's like... Well, at least in Boston, I've tried it, and... I, like in one and two, like just, I would just like randomly punching, walking punching up to somebody guys. and punching them. Yeah, not guards per se, but just random people. Okay, yeah, I've not, I've not tried that. And well, if you try well, why it, not? that'd be the first stabbed. thing I would try. Yeah, <laughs> and and this is, I mean, this is a silly thing, but this had me cracking up when my friend did it when we like we were younger and we started playing Assassin's Creed Two. Was you could grab somebody and throw them. Yeah. But what he did is he just grabbed somebody in the middle of a fist fight and just started dancing with them while everyone else was circling him, <laughs> like getting ready to punch. <laughs> You know, one thing that bothered me too is in this one, like they, they kind of were like going away from the idea of your life bar being your sync meter. Um, yeah. One did that really well, um, and they've kind of just slowly gone away from that. In this one, they just completely fucking threw that out the window. You just have a life bar now, and it recharges. This is a red bar. It, it's a, it's no, like a, it's a, a white, white meter um, oh. over next to your your uh, mini map, but it like it straight up just recharges. Like there's no there no, there are no health do items I can find in this just... game. You just, you just gotta stay out of combat. While it heals. Yeah, just stay out of combat. That's it. Um, Get out of combat. Switch out your traits and your utilities. <laughs> but I didn't you know. I, in general, I mean, I'm enjoying the game a lot. Um, there's just some weird quirks here and there that I didn't. That I know were not in the other Assassin's Creed games because I fucking just played them. Um, so like it, again, it feels like they've they've taken some, some steps forward forward with this game, but it feels like they've taken almost as many steps backwards. Uh, the frontier is also something that's really interesting in concept, but like they've mentioned on on Giant Bomb, um, they don't really capitalize on it, and it it kind of feels like maybe an update to the uh, the areas between the major cities in the first game, but it still has that same problem of fucking none of this matters. 
Yeah, I, so I'd like to I'm see. Better like, off just, I'm better off just quick traveling because this is all pointless. Yeah, I, I think uh, like what we can take from this is like what, hopefully what people, uh, the designers and whatnot have taken from. Uh, crap! It was that game where you would just climb dragons. What? Skyrim. Right. Dragons. It's not Skyrim. Dragons Dogma. Uh, but, I've like, literally climbed Dragon's Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. Dragon's Dogma. Okay. One froze up. Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the same concept. Aragon? It's just like the, the the free roaming in the wilderness is a great concept, and I hope like is there's it that a game PS3 that revolves game? around that. The ship fighting is another great concept, and like yeah. if they built on that a little bit more, it could be its own game. Like that, that would be a I hate to say it, but like a Pirates of the Caribbean game that I would like to play. Well, and and that's Lair. something I could I, I could just h- mute it. Hope that they talking about go Lair? forward with this is like I'm hoping that with this game like. With this game, they took a, a lot, if not almost all, of the um, systems that they added throughout the Assassin's Creed 2 games um, and just threw them out the window. Like, they're just fucking gone. Yeah. And replaced them, like, whole cloth with new uh, mechanics and new new systems. These new systems, you know, some of them are, are really interesting, like you said, like the, the boats and stuff. Um, and others are maybe just wasted potential, like the Frontier. Um, but I'm hoping that they iterate on this with, um, or iterate on the on this with the next game, and instead of just throwing them out entirely, make them actually interesting. And I think they have the potential to do so, and, and they have the potential for the next game to be really fucking good if they can manage to make all of this stuff work the way they intended it to do in this game. Right on. So, uh, anything else we're so, playing? Uh, I've also been playing Far Cry Three, and that game's fucking awesome. Ooh. Oh. I've, nice. I've I've taken Patrick's approach to it. So the first thing I did, um, I'm not very far in, maybe a couple hours. Did you fight a shark? Uh, I have not fought a shark yet, but basically I did not purchase anything until I could afford the bow. Um, and then immediately bought that and then bought a quiver for it. So I can, I can hold up to 10 arrows now. I did a couple missions where I didn't have the quiver, so all I held was five. That is fucking hard because you have five arrows and that's it. So you I better heard that not miss. I the best part of that game is stealth. And it's, it's the like best the, part of the game, friend, from what I heard, is like just not like the story. a person I know said, um, "This is the <laughs> best best stealth game I've ever played, and it's not a stealth game." And yeah, I'll is give that, that. True? Would you say I, that? I'm fucking terrible at stealth games, and I tend to hate them. But these newer stealth games are starting to turn me around on that. And Far Cry Three has done the best job so far of what I played. Mm-hmm. Like they just it, it makes you feel fucking amazing, like stalking through the the grass with your and your it's not bo- too easy with. Nothing but you I think it's a, no, think it's a good change of words because you are you're, you're like you're stealthing with the intent to kill, whereas all the other stealth games you're stealthing to avoid. Yeah, exactly. Cough, like, dishonored cough. Like in, in this game, yeah. like I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the early missions I had, I was like stealthing into this uh, um, encampment, and I needed to kill all the dudes. It was like the very first time you reach one of the camps, um, you can you can liberate once you've killed killed all the guys. And at that time, I didn't have the bow; all I had was a pistol, and. Granted, a little bit into it, I managed to end up fucking up and accidentally reveal myself. But, like, what's cool about it is, like, you feel like – you it makes you really feel like a predator. Like, you are stalking them through the grass. You're tagging them so you can keep an eye on where they are. And, like <laughs> – All of this sounds very familiar to me. Well, until until like, you look over to the your left it, and you realize there's a tiger next to you and you get mauled. Well, see, I haven't run into that quite as bad yet. Oh. But one of the nice things I like about it is the uh, the stealth kill with your knife can be done from like fucking 10 feet away and also oh, so be, it's called duty it can also be done at a dead run oh, nice. so like i, so I, I was really like stalking duty. through the grass well no because like i was stalking through the grass and there was a guy that had come out by himself and and, and so i knew i knew i needed to kill him but he was facing in a way that i couldn't just stalk up on him very slowly and actually catch him he would end up seeing me so instead i just fucking booked it out of the grass and lunged at him and killed him and then turned around, ran back into the grass, slid into the grass. No one saw me. Jesus. Do I want to play this game? This is, this is like, yeah, this game is fucking awesome. <laughs> and like I said, that was like, before the bow. There, there was actually, a, there was a mission a, a little bit later on after I got the bow. Um, you're supposed to sneak around to get these uh, radio things off these guys and get up to this boat. And once you um, get up to the, the radio in the boat itself, a bunch of guys are called in and you need to escape. And I've watched some other people play it, and basically the idea of it is like a firefight to get your way out of there. Um, that's not how I handled it, because all I had was a bow. I hadn't unlocked uh, the ability to have a second weapon yet. So I actually like snuck around at the top of this boat, picking them off like sniper style from the top of the boat. Um, a couple of them making it onto the boat themselves, and I just fucking stabbed them in the neck. 
um, until they were all dead, and I had still like two or three arrows left, and then went around and just scavenged my arrows off their body before leaving the area. I see that was going to be the next question. If like you shoot someone, if you only have five arrows, do you have to go pick your arrows up? Yeah. So you want to make that's what I'm saying. You like you want to make sure you don't miss because if you manage to hit a guy, I mean, even if you don't hit a guy, if you know where your arrow landed, you can actually go pick it up. But there's no indicator on the mini map or above the arrow or anything to show you where it's at. Um, so you want to make sure you hit the guy because if you hit him, then when you go over to loot his body, you'll pick up the arrow. Nice. Okay. So yeah, Far Cry 3. something I, maybe get into. I absolutely would, would suggest you play that game. That game is awesome. I don't. I, I don't even. I, mean, I don't even fucking care about the, money. the story. Like the story could be terrible. I don't care. Huh. I don't know. I feel like if I want my ridiculous open worldness, I can always just go back to Skyrim and just mod the hell out of it. <laughs> well, it's just oh, like the, the, there is yeah. there going to be mod support for Far Cry Three. I doubt it. You think it's going to be a thing that happens or um mod support? Ah. I, I mean, like, well, it's well, I mean, it, it already has. Do, do we think it someone's has, going to make their own story of, yeah, like, basically what Giant Bomb has been asking, like, to be the ending of? Yeah, I, I think I think it's possible. Animus simulator. I think it's possible because I mean they already have a world editor built into the game. Um, fr- from but launch. the thing is, Far Cry Two also had a world world editor built into the game, but right. it simply is not. Uh, a but nobody liked Far Cry Two. I'm um, pardon. Nobody liked Far Cry Two, so like the the mod but, scene wasn't but it there was for that used game. the hell out of it. But the thing is. The problem is, unless they develop a, a building kit, absolutely nothing can really come out of it. Unless people just pour time into it, which I doubt. I, I, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. I can see with as as um, much praise as this game is getting, if it gets the sales to back that up, I could maybe see them going in and adding that in after the fact. Um, just because it... it... Would, you, would you say like they should add like straight-up dev tools like Valve does with Hammer and... like? That would be amazing did with the creation kit. Yeah, that would be amazing. I don't. I don't know if they will, and if they do, it, it might be a, a bit before they did. Um, but I definitely feel like they need to open it up to s- some extent beyond just the level editor, because the level editor is mostly there for like the multiplayer stuff, which is like the weakest part of the game. But le- but yeah, the level editor is actually like really robust and really cool and well done and everything. So like, it'd be a shame for them to just leave it. And because like then nobody will use it. Like I, I think that really they would be smart to actually utilize the the popularity of the kind of the the personal stories that people come out of that game with, and um, the capabilities that that level editor would allow players to actually like create those stories for others to enjoy as well. Okay, that makes sense. Because like just going back to Skyrim, like with modding, there was some guy who did a whole series of videos where he would take like. 50 of one thing and like 100 of another and have them fight on this choke point to see who would win. <laughs> but what happened was with the one one of the ones that I watched, it was like necromancers versus some other type of mage. And in the middle of it, these two dragons decided, hey, let's land in the middle of the bridge <laughs> and just show everyone what's good. So oh, stuff yeah. like that. If they could add something like that, where you can just spawn, yeah, well, and create your own custom scenarios, and especially having and that, like that random sexy factor anime of made girls running around in Skyrim. What's well, I want to see. Basically, what I'm saying is, I want to see tigers versus land sharks. Well, and that's what I was gonna say too. Like, especially having that random factor of the wildlife, like that could make that even better. Mm-hmm. Like that's just there's so much potential there if they just go that extra mile with this game. This game could really have legs for a long time going forward. Um, I did play one other game quickly, and then I, I promise we'll move on. Um, but I did want to mention it at least. Um, I did also play some of the uh, StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm beta. Mm. Ooh, StarCraft! Oh, nice. Tell That's me more. Thing. Tell me more. That game is awesome, and with the patch they just put into it, it like that game, like, it's finally hitting a point where they might um, start just doing kind of the tweaking, balance, getting it ready for um, for launch in in March, and. It'll probably bring me back to playing that game again. Fuck, I never See, played that I, game I've super been serious. I've contemplating but, the same thing, oh, man. Like, like because March is in my birthday, and I'm wondering whether or not I should pick it up for my birthday. But I'm not sure whether or not I want to be pulled into StarCraft. Well, like okay, there's fair, the first few months of StarCraft ruined many friendships of mine. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, there's some really it, cool things they did with 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 this one, or that they're doing with this. Uh, first off, they're adding cross-region play, finally. So if you have any right. friends over in Europe and you're, you're in America... How many years did this take? Yeah, I know, right? Two oh, no, it gets, it, gets, it gets better, Noob. It gets better. Uh, they're finally also introducing um, shared replays. So you and your friends can hop into a oh, game okay. and watch a replay together. Uh, no, m- cool. no more counting down. Three, two, one, play. Oh, God, I'm three <laughs> seconds behind you. Hang on, let me speed it up. And uh, Yeah, none of that shit anymore. Um, 
But they also probably one of the the biggest things that they're adding in with this is uh what's what's called unranked multiplayer. And so what that basically is, like you have the ladder, like you you know have in in Wings of Liberty, um, but so then like you also have games or no 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 there there no, already games already games. exist yeah. What this is is this is actually a matchmaking system. It still uses the matchmaking, so it still matches you up against people of your skill level. But it, it's games that you can play that do not at all affect your ladder ranking, which so is basically so practice. incredibly basically, handy. You're not pressure to like you can hopefully just have fun well you can have fun you can learn new, learn new builds you can maybe even like decide, yeah, try out a new build i'm gonna go or... play i'm gonna try out zerg i haven't played them before i'm gonna try them and and completely do that at your skill level and not worry about screwing up your, your ladder ranking right and, and as somebody who like stresses way more than i should about ladder games like it's been a godsend having that because like i don't even play ladder games in in the beta right now i've literally just been playing those unranked and it makes it so much easier for me to just go from game to game to game to game in when normally, no like, yeah, normally, like the, just the pressure of alone, the, the stress of, of of ladder games alone. Like, I'll play one and then like wait twenty minutes before I hop into another game. The real question here is whether Star Jeweled is going to get updated with the new units. Is what now? Star Jeweled, the the oh, uh, Star Jeweled made custom right. game. That's Jeweled. It's like the most fun thing ever. Yeah, oh, I don't know if that'll get updated. I imagine there'll be a new version of it. Okay. That and, and I mean, if they don't, if they don't make it, somebody else features. will because they've already put yes, the arcade true. into the beta. That's true. Oh, nice. Although all all those things you listed, land support was not one of them. I am sad. Um, I uh... um, I think they're gonna make there's gonna be like some sort of a land client or something. I believe that I had heard them talking about or like a tournament client um, that they'll be able to use for tournaments. Okay. I, I want to say I read that somewhere, but I, I can't confirm that a hundred percent. Because um, latency and connection issues during tournament matches. Yeah, mm, yeah. I was watch- I was actually watching uh, the IPL five not too long ago, and when they had a match, um, I-, I don't recall who it was between, but when it fucking DC'd the observer uh, three times in a row, was that that was when Total Biscuit was one of the, the uh, uh, announcers? Yes, yes. I-, I was watching that. Yeah, yeah. That was fucking horseshit. That made me chuckle. And like that was it, it, that was a perfect example as to why Blizzard needs to have like if they don't have like, if they don't if they don't want to have land play in available for everybody I can understand that to some extent there are some reasons right, some... I, I don't understand why they didn't just add in land play for tournament people because yeah, exactly I don't, that's I don't the thing like there, there are there people are... don't have it but tournaments yeah. come on there the, there are features new, in this there's game there's not enough people that want to play that game competitively it's yes, not like clearly it's one of the biggest... I think I think frigging Victoria Two has a bigger competitive play scene. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so I, I want to say that they did introduce something like that, or they're planning on introducing something like that for tournaments, because like, like you said, they kind of have to, after seeing a shit show like that, where they eventually just had to go to commercial, because it was just, it was failing so badly, right. um, and they were running I mean, out of to be of fair, those, to those incidents time. are pretty f- far in between. Um, like, it happens at least a once a tournament. Occurrence. But the thing is, it happens in so few matches, but when you play so many tournaments with so many matches per tournament, it pops up relatively well, and, frequently. And, and especially it, like it happens. It happens it this way too to be remedied easily by just giving a fucking yeah. And, and think, of this, think of it this way too. Like one thing when it comes to, to competitive play, one factor that is is very a very very big factor is um, momentum. They talk about it a lot in the tournaments. Like the the commentators will talk about it. Uh, where if somebody's on a winning streak, you know that momentum will tend to help them out as well, and to con- continue winning games. And that momentum is broken when suddenly games are crashing. They're having to sit there for fifteen, twenty minutes while they, you know, mm-hmm. deal with these issues of getting in and out of these games, and and that can hurt the play as well. Right. It's almost like it, it's. Uh, I guess this. Yeah, this makes sense. Um, when like football matches and whatnot, uh, like American football, not soccer football, but like when it's really getting close down to the wire and people are in this like this mindset of this has to get done calling a timeout right before that happens screws with people's minds mm-hmm. and like that's that's the same scenario with like the game crashing it's not like something that's intentionally happening but it still it messes with a player's mind and it screws up their their head and then i have to think about it yeah, yeah. They had to like re- redo, like, okay, I have to redo this strat yeah. in my head. Yeah, exactly. Well, after you are, had everything figured out. And that was the problem they ran into with that game that, that we were referring to is like the the two players, like every time they restarted, they're like, well, do you think they're going to go with the same build? Like they probably had to go with the same build. And, and the worst part about it is at this point, they're going in with the same build knowing what the other person went with. And they have yeah. to just kind of ignore that they know that information. And like there's this kind of like unwritten agreement or you know unspoken agreement between the players, like, 
we're both going to go with our same build. I'm not just I'm not just going to six pool cheese you because I know what you're you're going with. We're just going to go on with this and play our game. And like that shouldn't have to happen. If the tournament comes down to a gentleman's agreement, you fucked up somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, that's what yeah, I've been yeah. playing. So, I would so you're assume I Heart of the Swarm. Six so yeah, I've been playing playing Heart of the Swarm. I'm going to continue playing Heart of the Swarm because that game is awesome. And when as much it as I end, uh, I think it ends like right before launch. I would imagine. Okay, so, so it just keeps got going. a while. Yeah, so that's we got a while. So like, yeah, if anybody is actually interested in in checking out that beta, like all you got to do is pre order the game through Amazon and I think GameStop, um, and you get a beta. So Amazon. So yeah, Amazon. Like that's the best part. Like go to GameStop. Well, and if nothing else, go to Amazon because you don't have to pay for it till it comes out anyway. So you get free beta access. There are people selling beta keys on on eBay because people are fucking retarded. And <laughs> like, just go to Amazon, put zero dollars down, and get your beta. Key. <laughs> it's kind of messed up if you cancel right before the game comes out, right? Well, I mean, it is, but at the same time, like you could have done the same thing for Guild Wars Two, actually. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And it, but I mean, it makes more sense than going to eBay and paying forty dollars for a beta key. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> like I'm not going to be doing that. I I already have my collector's edition of it pre-ordered, so that's of course you do. That's not happening. Of course I do. How much did that cost? Uh, Seventy, eighty. Oh, well, that's not bad 80. at all. Never yeah. mind. Well, it's, it's, it's an expansion. It's an expansion, so like it's forty dollars for the base game. It's also Blizzard. The Their expansions are it's always Blizzard. 40. I was expecting to be like one. I know, but I mean, I was expecting the collector's edition to still be like 120. Oh, no, 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 no. It's always like double what the, the cost of the game is, I think. Oh, okay. I don't buy Blizzard games, except <laughs> I actually do own StarCraft. I should probably play that at some point. Right. Uh, Thurb, other than Cards Against Humanity, anything else? Or was that all you've been playing? Really, it's just, I mean, with the workload, I, I think I have one day off this week, and they're probably going to ask me to come in that day. Holiday um, so hours. I, yeah, so Best much time fun. of the year. Yeah. Uh, I've been making the boat. Cash. I've made most of it. Um, I have. I have still been working on that book. I mentioned like three weeks ago. It's just I'm not that good at like you know speeding through nonfiction. I'm trying to, to get what I can with this. I'm reading The Hobbit. That's, oh, I'm I mean, reading. I'm reading Peace. I should read The Hobbit. Ooh. Yeah, I'm like two hundred and some pages. You should read The Hobbit because it's really short. It's like three hundred pages. Paperback. I'll just watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. well, I want to read it before. before I see I've, the seen, movie. I've seen the movie. I just I should go back and read the book again before. Wait, wait. You've seen the Hobbit already? How was I it? Like I meant, like I've read the book. as what I meant. <laughs> I've read the book already, oh. but I should read it again before the movie comes out. Sorry. I say exclusive review of the Hobbit. <laughs> it was shit. Breaking five NDAs <laughs> to bring you this news, Durin. Nice. Uh, but no, I'm like yeah, during that. during lunch breaks, I've been playing cards against humanity with coworkers, and that's been fun. We I, we haven't reached the this is getting stale. Weird story though. I ordered the uh, like right when the, they released the new stuff with the Christmas pack, um, really, or they re refresh their uh, stock in uh, the starter pack. I ordered like four of them, and like I ordered like one to send back home, and like a, a couple for coworkers, and one for me. Before that, I ended up ordering the expansion. That still hasn't shown up yet, but I got the starter packs. Huh. I was going to ask, well, have, have you gotten your Christmas pack yet? Um, no, I haven't gotten that yet. Okay. okay. I, I don't know if either. I got mine because I had it shipped home and I okay. went to school. So. It's like, according to the tracking, it's like they keep trying to send it here, but failing somehow. So I have to go to the post office on a weekday, hmm. yell at them, what's going on? <laughs> but, I yeah, need my really dirty jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we opened it and said, you know, big black dick. What the hell is that about? <laughs> or a suspension, no, it's too. It's a bigger, yeah. blacker dick. Come on. There we go. Get it right. Um, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't opened it yet. I don't know. I haven't played with that expansion. I ordered it, and then I opened it up, saw the first card was bigger, blacker dick, put it back in the box, went, yup, and just put it back <laughs> in the drawer. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah Duren, if uh, assuming you still haven't gotten it for the holidays, I think summertime will be in your part of the States. At least the south central, I guess. Hmm. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. you guys are gonna hang out? Yeah, that's well, exactly. I'm, I'm meeting up with some folks in Texas, so. Oh, okay. Trying to do some. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much what I've been doing. I've been mostly, uh, if not that, then playing running in Guild Wars. That's <gasps> what's a game. that video game? But, but, but what about my my thing? Oh yeah, no, we don't care. Victoria. Oh, oh, no, I didn't play Victoria. Oh, I did play what? Victoria, but that's not what did, I'm gonna did, talk did about. Did you beat the Did you beat the guys in the Netherlands? Oh, oh, the Netherlands! I told you, didn't exist. Doesn't exist anymore. Noob Neither was nice. playing. Noob was playing Alan Wake. I was playing Alan Wake. 
What? So what do you think of Alan Wake? So basically, I, is this I your got, first time playing I, it? Um, yes, my friend gave it to me. He gifted it to me um, in August, and I've had it paused about at eighty five percent downloading until yesterday. <laughs> and I decided to unpause the download and start playing it because I feel bad. And man, I realize I am not good with scary games. I am not fucking good with scary <laughs> games. Fuck scary games. Well, that, that game oh, really man. tries to fuck with you, too. And the thing is, it would be a lot less scary if, if I, it was a first-person shooter. I'll say that right now. If I knew how to aim, and I, I maybe if I had a controller, that game could be a lot less scarier than it is. Wait, are oh, you yeah. saying... You, wait, hold on. Wait, I'm no, confused. I'm, how would a controller make it less scary? Because I'd be able to aim properly a lot better. Oh Amy, no! I fucking hate. Are we Amy, going? Though. Are we going into this conversation? No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm just saying, no, 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 because it's a third-person game, and I hate controllers. But I'm saying, like, if there was a way to aim better in that game, that game would be a lot less scarier. Oh, so it's not saying. the mouse's fault. It's the game's it just fault. Just simply or how aim the mouse. You, you yeah. wanted to be. You wanted to have uh, controller support so that you could turn on some kind of aim assist. No, I, I want. I want a better way to shoot people. I want auto. I, I want an aimbot. You want, for that you want game, like a lock on? Scared. Lock on. Because. Fuck they, trying to aim. It's kind of like I'm assuming they're trying to give the impression of you're a person who doesn't know how to use a gun. So it's like it's hard it, to kind of. I aim could be wrong shoot. here, but I think it has a lock on. Does it, oh, it does have sort of a lock on, but I'm I'm terrible at aiming <laughs> for a person, so that doesn't really help me when I, my. Well, see, that's the thing though. Like most of your like on the other side of the thing. Yeah. The 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 flashlight's really the biggest thing, and once you get their thing broken down, like it's only a couple of shots and they're dead. Oh, but the thing is. The problem is when you don't have you ran out of flares, right? Because basically, like, what the th- idea these is, flares? these these dark things have some sort of black shield, and you need to cut them down with light. And yeah. there's like five of them running at you. Flashlights, you can take out like two of them, and then three of them just kill you. Is what happens. Fuck that. Well, see, the biggest problem with that game is that there are areas where there's just infinitely spawning enemies. Oh god! And, and then and that's they don't tell you to just run. They just well, say. They might be spawning. Who knows? Just try to figure <laughs> well, no, it out. It's, it's really and unfortunate, too, because it's also a game that encourages exploration through, like, trying exactly. to find the, the mugs and the pages and everything else. Right. And so, and, like, and you, you can't fucking do those. Like, I want to like, I, I strangle any developer out there who, who does that. Like, it happens so often where you'll have a game that encourages exploration and then has And then they try to fuck enemies. you over if you try to explore. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, it's, it's the fucking worst. But, but it, is, it is a great game. And for some reason... I don't know why, but I feel like it reminds me so much of Deadly Premonition. Watching those because they're they're both they're both based on the same TV series, or inspired by inspired by. Ryan, I don't know. It just that's that's where you're getting that that. clear interlapping, interlooping things. It's 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 weird because they're they're so different, but but yet like because they are both inspired by that same TV show, like. You, you still see it those similarities. It has the same sort of feeling for some reason. The yeah. characters feel very similar, and everything is just... It, and now I kind of want to play Deadly Premonition. Um, <laughs> I didn't yeah. get back to that again. I'm, I'm only a few I'm, hours I'm excited it. on... I'm wondering whether or not I should buy the DLC. Have you played the DLC? Was it American Nightmare? Uh, yeah, American Nightmare. Played, well, there's that, and then there's also like the um, the actual DLC DLC. The American Nightmare right. is a standalone um, expansion. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, but there was like the the author, and there was like one or two others I think that were released. Um, that I heard those were good too, mm. but like none of that matters because American Nightmare is where it's at because you're in that TV show, and that TV show is like one of the best things about that right. game. Oh, and um, just as a side note, Night wait what Night Falls? No, what what is it called again? Is it Night uh, Falls? Night Springs, the television Night Springs, Springs. best television show ever. Yeah, that, I'd that's what I'm saying. On that, that, that's what, that's what American Twilight Nightmare Zone. is based about. I love it. Like in American Nightmare, you are in Night Springs. Oh, that seems so good. And the radio. What was the good. What was the thing that? Um... I really love the music too. Not not like yeah. the ambient music, but like the music they play, just the soundtrack. I like just about everything about that game, other than the actual like combat. I don't like the gameplay. Like, the driving, combat, the, the, the combat is shit, driving. but everything else about that game is great. Right. I wish it was. Did any of you guys uh, have you heard of or seen um, Rod Serling after he did Twilight Zone did something called the Night Gallery? I feel like I heard, heard of it. That. It's it's like not as well known, but basically the premise was is like Serling would start off each episode, and you would see a painting, and the painting would either have something to do with the like short story that he would do. It would be like, like some crazy story, or it would like you see uh, a, like see it in the uh, episode, and it's like oh that's the callback to the, the painting. 
but it, it'd be like you that know, sounds familiar. Campy, scary things. Yeah, that sounds familiar. All the same lines. Um, that and clear Victoria Two thing. I got I got Victoria Two working for a lot of other people, and we're planning on doing like a big multiplayer game, and I'm really oh, nice. excited for that. Um, so stuff like that's actually really exciting for Victoria Two. Speaking of big multiplayer games, some might even say massively multiplayer. Yes. Oh. Oh God. Wait, I say like, wait, move on. Planet Side Two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 MMO FPS. That's what. Wait. That's what this podcast is about, right? Right. Yes. Halo, the new Halo MMO FPS. First person story TR, games like TR, TR for life. You mean Destiny? Wait, is that going to be an MMO? About... Wait, no, there, no, there, there, there were, there were rumors episode. that it was going Dust to be. It sounds like it's one or what is it? <laughs> yeah, five one four. That's four. There were rumors that Destiny was going to be. It sounds more like it's going to have like multiplayer tie-ins to the single player or something like that. I don't. I don't think it's actually oh, going to be sweet. like real multi or real MMO. That would be terrible. Also, I'm reading a book called Peace They Say, a book about the Nobel Peace Prize. Read the book. Very good book. There. Uh, I done. will read I'm it done. as soon as I'm done with this tome that's taking me forever to get through. <laughs> it's not even that big. It's like 400 pages, but I'm like oh. 100 in. All right, we're an hour in. Go for it. We're an hour in. Guild Wars yeah, 2. Guild Wars. Guild Wars. So I guess right, do you want to go over any before we go into, uh, before we go into, the, before we go into the the um, main topic. I do want to uh, bring up one bit of news that is maybe important. No. no. Wait, it, what's this? I'll be I the mean, judge of this. So, Guild Wars 2 was named Time Magazine's uh, 2012 Game oh, of the yeah, Year. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I was like, huh. That. That's weird. That, it, um, that is if weird. If I didn't have and opinions like, about Time Magazine, I guess I'd be excited, but I have opinions about Time Magazine, so I'm not very excited. Well, that's that's kind of what I mean. Like, when I'm like, maybe good news or important yeah. news or whatever. Like, who, like, I looked at the rest of the list and it seemed respectable. Like Xenoblade was on there. Yeah, yeah. Like looking at it, like okay, like okay, these guys these are clearly either played some games or read some gaming forums to come up with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, because it wasn't all just Call of Duty, Halo, that kind of stuff. Halo was uh, on there. They, they were like going off nine. like gross product of money sent to time. Yeah. So I mean, like, it's really cool. It, it's at least cool if nothing else. Like Guild Wars Two is getting recognition. Like it's not just. Like media is very it's not just quick. us assholes talking about well, it. No, it's not that. It's, it, media is very it quick is. to jump on anything negative when it comes to an MMO. I mean, I saw an article on Gamespot uh, this last week um, where apparently NCSoft had had laid off some people, um, but the way the article uh, headline was was like Guild Wars Two publisher um, struck with layoffs, right. And it's like I'm like, looking at like specifically <laughs> Guild Wars Two. I'm like, well, okay, let's look off, at this right. here a little bit more here. And this is this is NCSoft laying people off the week of the closing of City of Heroes, which is another game that they publish. I'll say let's let's reword this: City of Heroes and Aeon Publisher struck with layoffs. Yeah, that's the thing. That's exactly what I told one of my friends. I was like, you know, this this they, they could easily just replace Guild Wars Two with Aeon, and it. Right. It wouldn't be as it wouldn't be a headline, and that's that's why they put the Guild Wars Two name in there. It's a current or MMO. City of Heroes publisher, considering that's the thing that's shutting down. Exactly. Maybe well, that would and, make and sense. And that's the thing. Though. No, it's, it's, we're also the, we're also talking sell. about we're also talking about a well we're also talking about a, a Game publisher, spot. <laughs> big newspaper publisher. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. we're also yeah. we're also talking about a publisher like that doesn't necessarily like NCSoft publishes a lot of fucking games like that doesn't necessarily mean anything at all, positive or negative for Guild Wars Two. But that's just what the media does. Like they jump on whatever the biggest, newest MMO is, and anytime there is negative news about it, they they report on it. That was probably one of the biggest things. In all honesty, that was probably one of the biggest things that hurt Star Wars. There were some negative yeah, games about the game in general. they were trashing on them. Right. But the media fucking killed that game. I don't care what anyone says. That game was not as bad as the media actually made it out to be. Um, and, and so like it's just it's what they do. And so it's nice to see a media outlet. Granted, it's not it's no GameStop, it's no IGN, but. It is a media outlet that is at least shedding, you know, positive light on an MMO. Right. Seems like IGN has done a lot of Guild Wars Two articles yep. just from casually browsing IGN from time to time. Yeah. It's, it, well, and, and Guild Wars Two seems to. I mean, it seems to be doing pretty well. You know, I, I figure if nothing else, I engage that, that Guild Wars Two is doing pretty well because it's actually, for the most part, staying out of the media spotlight. Like, yeah. There's not. There's and not a lot of media stores about doing it. well. Like. Cost me almost ten gold to buy a bank slot. I was upset. Oh, geez. 
Wow. Yep. <laughs> Conversion rate is terrible. Holy shit. <laughs> it would cost me like 25 gold to get the other two bank slots that I need. Not bank well, slots. Character slots. Yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, that was that was, that was was the news I wanted to bring up. I just thought that might be something at least worthy of, of mentioning. I was like, eh, and then I saw that they put Xenoblade Chronicles at number two, and I was like, mm, this list isn't terrible. Yeah, like I saw some of the comments on there, and they're like, Xenoblade Chronicles number two? Ugh. Like, as if it should have been number one over Guild Wars 2. five comments for the Guild Wars 2 thing. Like, as as if it should have been above Guild Wars 2. And I'm like, you know what? It made it on the list. Like, that's... It's number two. In a year... That's very high. Well, and in a year of releases that we've had this year, for a game like Xenoblade Chronicles, a game that almost didn't come out anywhere outside of Japan, to have actually been released like that, like, and and be on number two on the list, like, that's that's pretty fucking good. Especially being a fucking fantasy RPG. On the Wii. Yeah. In the age of, you know, Halo and Call of Duty. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it seemed like a pretty pretty stand-up list overall. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were your typical, like, Halo. Call, uh, I don't know if Call of Duty was on there. I don't remember. Uh, Call I know of, Halo was. I have not seen Call of Duty on any lists. Of course. Why would Call of, of course Duty not. be I mean, they're not terrible I games. Mean. No, wait. But I mean, did you guys watch the VGAs last night? I missed. They those. didn't no, win best. No, they, no, they, no, they didn't win best them. multiplayer. Uh, yeah, I tried watching some of it, but I was just like, uh. No, I actually watched all of it. It was terrible. Game, yeah, I'm happy. Win game of the year. It wasn't. It wasn't it. terrible. I will say that. Like it was. It was kind of boring. But like that was probably a good I thing. I the winners, and the winners seemed okay. Samuel L. Jackson did say "motherfucker" multiple times. <laughs> he and did. I think that was the highlight of the night. Sa- Samuel L. Jackson actually did a pretty decent job of, of doing this. It and, does seem, yeah. but he did look. It just looked like he he was reading off a teleprompter, and then he just decided to sp- like throw in "motherfucker" whenever well, he thought it got boring. Okay, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as when they brought out um fucking oh god what actress was that they brought out um and like Don't ask immediately me. out of her mouth was her trying to like. Hey guys, I'm a gamer. I played Mario once. Yeah, that's that's Check out this category. Yeah, they do. Like Zachary Levi plays video games. I will say, yeah, that yeah, like that. But like, they didn't they didn't pander to an audience that doesn't exist, like they've done in previous years. They actually did a fairly right. decent job with the show itself. That said, looking yeah. at the audience at the VGAs, don't look like regular people who play <laughs> video games. Just saying. No, I think half of them were hired. There's an unproportionately high amount of women in there. <laughs> anyway, um, Guild Wars Two. Yeah, Guild Wars Two. Getting us back on topic. Yeah. Um, there's there's uh, was a slew of just like uh, updates and bug fixes. The two big things that came out of the, the la- latest patch was uh, in World vs. World, very similar to structured PvP, if you're invulnerable or stealth, it doesn't you can't stop people from capping a point now. We're getting which, there. All we need now is to get rid yeah. of stealth finishing, and I am very happy. Oh, and, and this week, uh, apparently they're finish. trying a new fix with calling, which, I mean, like, that's an issue that's ongoing. They're trying to fix it. I just like that they're actually trying, like, this week, we're going to test this stuff out. And uh, I do like the, uh, the, the, hopefully we'll see more of them testing stuff every That week. being said, do you guys see them doing a test server for all of this stuff? It's just sort of popping uh, in my head I now. I, I would love to see you something know, like that, but I, I don't think it's going to happen. Be, it'd be nice, but with the way that they can push out updates in this game compared to, like, other MMOs yeah. where they kind of have to pull things down, mm-hmm. do maintenance and stuff, I don't see much of a need for a test server because they can throw this stuff out there Try it out for a few days, like, ah, oh, that didn't work out. Let's go ahead and pull it back off. And not really disrupt the gameplay too much. But the thing is, the thing is, it's not that I care, because, like, there's going to be bugs in new content releases, but a lot of people bitch about bugs. And if you get a test server where you say, okay, we're going to push this on the test server for a week. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, but at least I, lets the community well, I mean, feel like they're helping solve these issues. The thing, yeah. the thing I will say, I, I could maybe see a test... And this may be why they're not doing it. I could see a test server for PVE content stuff, but when it comes mm-hmm. to like like love love stuff, the the people who like bitch and complain about bugs like you're talking about are probably not the people who are getting way into love love. Yeah, like they'd be the people who'd be think, totally I cool think with having get way stuff into online. Crazy anyway, but well, yeah, I'm like, saying, said, like uh, they'd be the people for you, for you. <laughs> but no, I think the best fix for for like for testing things on web web is just this week we're going to try this out i think that's like just keep it live yeah like t- take a slow approach to it like there's no reason to just rush into like oh god this stuff's kind of broken let's let's fix this 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 let's throw it all out there see what happens see if it works uh, i oh, think god. i think we we know we're in arena likes to take their time when fixing things yeah like this the game isn't going anywhere anytime soon like they got Sweet they got time they also have really <laughs> small teams working on everything so that's probably yeah before that yeah like you know one guy working on the class uh, you know, balancing. Well, they had one guy that's, working on balancing the first game. 
Oh yeah, but the first the game was a little bit of that game. Yeah. No, the first game uh, was much harder to balance because it had over a thousand skills. Yeah, and multi-classing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, one other issue that, uh, or one one thing that has caused some some wrinkles in the uh, community was they tried fixing jump spamming. Ah, this was funny. Yeah, it's it, it was actually um they similar to how they tried like stopping bots. Um, people were doing jumping puzzles and suddenly getting booted from the game for jump spamming. <laughs> I laugh. And, uh, yeah, to those who uh, don't know, uh, what jump spamming is, is like, uh, apparently people do it in World vs. World, but it's basically, it's a way of climbing sheer cliff faces. You just, like, angle a certain way and just spam the jump key. And I've, I've had a couple, like, just messing around, like, uh, in Lion's Arch, but apparently people were doing this to scale over walls and cap keeps in World vs. World. That sounds kind of messed up. Yeah, it was a little messed up. Um, they they've since like either scaled down the the way of de- of detecting it, or they they've scrapped it for now and looking for another approach. But yeah, they're trying to stop spam jumping now. Yeah, but it was also that, and a lot of times if you spam jump just for jumping sake, um, okay. one of them wouldn't go off, and you would just fail in a jumping puzzle because the game wouldn't let you jump. Your jumping got suppressed. It was oh, fun. nice. That happened for like a few hours, and they pushed a, a hot fix for it. it was funny. So yeah, that's that's. I mean, we're we're just keeping it light with updates this week. I think that's pretty much it. Do you guys uh, anything else you want to talk about in terms of uh, recent changes? Um, if you care about balance and world v world, you are crazy. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, that has nothing to do with recent patches. I'm just, okay. Let me rephrase that. If you think Anet should balance with World v World in mind, you are crazy. Well, I mean, like, you think you think ba- like balance what with World v World in mind? Um, You've skills and traits and stuff. Sorry, oh, no, none of that. Because okay. I, I hear people complaining all the time about balance and World v World. I'm Yelling like, about never meant portal to, bombs. Yeah, it was never meant to be balanced. Okay, yeah. I, I definitely but, uh, like uh, it. Uh, it's... The, the, the yeah, kind of, the like, kind of see... like small balance changes that they make, like none of that is going to affect World v. World. That's my point. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I I agree. Like, it is, there's no reason to. If you're going to go down that route, just make fucking World v. World just like structured and make it its own separate thing. Like, I actually kind of don't understand why they didn't. Well, when you go when you go into um into World v. World. They've started to split skills into PvE and PvP versions. If you go into World v. World, which one do you have? I don't know. It's a good thing to test out. We should, I mean... We should I'll, totally look up which skills are split and test that out later. I think some engineer skills were split, so we can, we can try that out. Okay, um, I'll hop on my engineer. What, what I, what I, I guess what, the one thing I would like to see is just an AMA with uh, the, the WebWeb Web developer, just so we can see like what their thought process is. Because I could talk for days about WebWeb Web balancing, but I also realize that none of it bloody matters, because... They're the ones A-Net, running the show. Because Anet does not balance with anything other than structured in mind. Yeah, I mean... It's, Which is how uh, it should be, should. in my opinion. I, I wholeheartedly agree, Shinboy. I just as, I'm as to keep who, whining. Oh, yeah. As someone who plays PvE, I'm like, balance with PvP in mind. I'm fine over here. <laughs> just keep doing your thing. If you want to make this Spe- overpowered in PvE, Speaking of ahead. PvE... Speaking of... Yeah, the, the main topic that I really wanted to uh, talk about is... Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, Arena said that they're uh, like on on their list of things to do in probably the updates coming in the the turn of the year are going to be a um, re like a, a revamping, I guess, or redesign of all the dungeons. There's going you know, to systematically. I, I don't know if it's going to be all at once or it's going to go through them, but they're going to change boss fights, trash. I, I'm not sure, but they're changing stuff. They mentioned changing rewards or increasing rewards as well. Yeah. And so I, I just figured now would be a good time to talk about uh, pretty much the boss fights we love, the boss fights we hate, what we'd like to see fixed, what we'd like to see stay. Um, just going through all the d- different dungeons relatively in a quick fashion, and we'll also cover fractals as well. But uh, that's why we brought Shinboy on for today's podcast, is because he recently got, congratulations sir, the Dungeoneer title. Yes. Oh, God. That was the last run for that. Oh, nightmares. Coupled with, like, getting a commander icon in an hour, so you are a commander Dungeoneer extraordinaire. You <laughs> jerk. Yes. How did you raise that much money? <laughs> he had that much money. Pretty much. Oh, I had, like, all these dungeons. Why you, 
If you had that much money, why didn't you donate it to the Nuvorama f- help fund his gear charity? And <laughs> you want to hear something it. funny? Want to hear something funny? Because you're never I online. Spent, I spent that hundred gold. I'm back up to one fifty. Oh, <laughs> good <laughs> lord! <laughs> you you alone probably own like fifty percent of the Guild Wars wealth. Yeah, Shimura, I think I no, have like three gold right now. True. I, if you want some, it's yours. <laughs> You, know, you like the skin that you want to buy, and it's like a reasonable amount. I'll buy it for you. I don't care. <laughs> so, what, really? Do you have some secret that you, no, you're not you. this money with, oh. or like, like what is it? What is it you're doing to make this? Oh, um, I think the biggest thing was that no, no. that uh, recipe you got, right? Yeah, yeah. The big thing is um, we're doing Twilight Arbor because you know, you know, Dern, when you said you wanted to do TA for some reason, I don't remember what reason. Yeah, for, for did that one path. Yeah. Um. So we kept going. Like after you dropped, and on one of those paths, I don't remember which one, out of a chest, I got a recipe for the Nightmare Coil, which is currently the only exotic power, toughness, vitality ring, aside from the ascended ones that you get can only get out of fractals. Um, so it's an exotic power, toughness, vitality ring that all it takes is your standard, you know, Oracalcum setting and band, and then 200 Twilight Arbor tokens. So, you know, one full run of all three paths. And sells for anywhere from twenty to twenty-five gold a pop. So, so basically, it's, 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 it's a well sought after thing, and the thing that's <laughs> limiting it is the the access to the recipe. Oh man. Yep. Because there's like you, and I think you, you kept mentioning there was like two other guys who would be like competing with you for getting a good price in to get the uh, thing first. Yeah, it was funny. I was doing it with a pug one day, and um, everyone, someone asked like, "What are you guys doing with the tokens from this place?" You know, just general curiosity, and I mentioned that. And they were like, oh, what's the recipe? And I'm like, oh, it's just the setting, band, and 200 tokens. And some guy was like, oh, man, I'm going to go make that right now. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> you need to get the recipe. It's like, you go, the, you try and do that. Let me know what happens. But yeah, that's basically, I've been feeding the Twilight Arbor money machine. That's how I've made most of my money. Well, I needed to run a bunch like, of Twilight Arbor, so I'm with you on that. Every, every day, it's like, hey, dude, do you want to play, do want to do Twilight Ar- Arbor? It's like, we just did but, a run with you not 20 minutes ago, Shinboy. Like, yeah, <laughs> do it again. Pretty much, pretty much what I what I've been doing is like doing a run during the day, because you know it resets when dailies reset at four server time. So I'm doing one during the day, and then one at night, and then one the next day, then one at night, just printing money. And Dern, I would make them for you, except you can't give me your tokens. But you can sell the, you so, can sell the rings, so though, right? To make one oh, for him, you, you have to run him through Twilight Arbor several times. Well, I did run Twilight, Twilight Arbor a bunch anyway, so that works out. But the thing is, like, run it with with Shinboy. But the yeah. thing is, I would need to be using my tokens for your ring, if you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll figure something out. I mean, like, I have a deal, a guildy price that I'll discuss with you later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll let's. Like, should we just start with the the catacomb? Start with the first one. Yes. Heart Kohler. He's my buddy. Yes. Kohler I wish is. All, the, I wish all boss uh, fights were like Kohler. He he is like one of the best. Just like. This isn't a gear check. This is a skill check. You have to know how to do this, or you're going to get wrecked. Yeah, you need to know how to dodge. Uh, you need awesome. to know how to line of sight. Because basically, Kohler is the common boss for all three AC paths, and he's an thief. And yeah, and yeah, inexplorable. He's a thief and a ranger. It's weird. Um, so basically, he has this big. Well, not, pole. not really, because I mean, it, it, he is a ghost, so he's from Guild Wars One, so he is able to multi class. He's yeah, he's a ranger assassin. Okay. Um, I'm just saying. <laughs> but there's assassins in Ascalon and that fractal, but there were no assassins. They were only in Cantha and Lore. And anyway. Um, oh my god, my so immersion! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Basically, on. he has a big AoE pole that he has a nice big tail on. Um, and then he does basically the equivalent of the Thief Elite skill Dagger Storm, where he spins in place. Spin to win! He spins the win and pieces everyone within a small radius of him pretty much instantly. Oh, yeah, it's bad. Um, so you really need to pay attention to to dodging at the right time and everything. But other than that, it's relatively straightforward, but it's a fun fight. So I hope every boss is like Kohler. He can pull you across the gap, by the way, which I found out. Oh, you There's, mean like the ravine of water? Yeah, you can get pulled across that. Cool. Because you know, um, if you the cave troll pops, and you have them fight each other, you, there's a side oh, yeah, the, there. The dynamic explorable, yeah. 
yeah, the, there's a side set of stairs that you can go up. And if you get them fighting on that side set, I was just standing there just watching them fight. I'm like, oh, wow, I can totally range one of these guys from here. I'm going to stand here and auto attack and not pay attention. And then I saw him spin. I'm like, ah, I'm over here. I'm safe. You can't get pulled across gaps. And then he hit me with the spin thing. And I flew through the air over the giant ravine and just died. And Revan turned around and was like, wait a minute. Where Chimboy go? Oh, wait, he's dead. And then just proceeded to laugh at you. Yeah, everyone proceeded to laugh at me, including myself. Because I was just thinking, you know, in Roll the World or any other mode, if there's a gap that someone's standing on, even if you can, like, attack them, you can't pull them. So I figured I was safe. I was wrong. I don't know. Maybe it was Scorpion Wire. I don't know. It's will have to see, get that test. Just harass thieves across ravines. Yeah, but AC AC is really easy. I guess it should be because it's the first explorable and you're all level 80. It's really easy. But are I also there think any other fights of... in there that like are, are like solid designs? I mean, I, I do like the, I really like the cage on Detha, or not the cage, but the traps. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's pretty cool. Um, the Howling King is a decent boss. Um, Ghost Eater is way too easy. It's just hit it till it dies. Yeah. And then Colossus Rumbless is like a more bullshit version of the Howling King. What, what I like, or at least don't understand, or what I don't like rather, is like. You go, you go with Death of the Ghost Eater to like set up all these traps. The traps are pretty much pointless. I, I mean, who do you mean? Well, it's like you, you told me just never use those those uh, turrets rather, not the traps, the turrets. Oh yeah, the turrets are completely useless. In the uh, yeah, the final fight with Ghost Eater, it's just like it's pointless. You're supposed to, I guess, according to the story of the dungeon, use them to kill the boss, but you just stand on them and they do like two damage. You're like, okay, I'm just gonna hop off this thing and <laughs> auto attack it. Just gonna hit it till it dies. <laughs> and it, like okay, and then for the story, I mean, I, I like the the Ranger Nettie boss. That's a that's a, a fun. The twin boss fight is really interesting. Oh yeah, it's been a while since I've done that. But I think uh, story mode for that dungeon has the coolest opening cutscene. Oh, just with Ritlock. Yeah, just being all pissed. Then he pulls out the sword at the end. And you're just like, oh shit. Got that's real what I said anyway. Shit just got real. But yeah, AC's fine. Um. That's my main source of tokens. I have gear that adds up to well over 3,000 AC tokens. Good lord. Oh, God. He, he, Something he like that. Got that title. Dungeoneer title. <laughs> Dungeon Master um, title. Dungeon Master. I, I guess uh, Noob and Endurin, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to like rapidly get to fights that you guys have no experience yep. with. Is there anything from AC that you guys love, hate? Um, like see change, want to see cap. cap? Well, I, I agree with Shinboy. Uh, Colossus Rumbles is pretty much just a, a kind of a bullshit fight. There's there's nothing fun about anything with that fight. I I, I like. I hope they do something. They, they they seem to really like the this idea of like line of sight breaking in in a lot of the uh, fights in, in at least in AC in, in some some of them, and they're just. I hope they figure out a better way to communicate that line of sight to the player. Because there have been t- there, yes, like, there have been times yeah. where you you feel like you are completely like you are behind the guy, but apparently still within his some weird like weirdly angled cone of vision, and you still die. Especially if you do the Howling King and then Colossus Rumbles after that, you see that you're like, oh okay, I know exactly what to do for this, yeah. and then you're over to the side and you die anyway, and you're just like, wow, that was that was a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the easiest way to do those fights is actually to just melee them and run through them. In case you're wondering. So, Dern, you get to run your Dagger Dagger. Yeah. That's what I did the other day. I ran through all of AC with Dagger Dagger, and it was fantastic. <laughs> I do like the idea of, like, range is dangerous. You need, you need to play as close to the chest as possible with this boss to get behind him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a nice mechanic. But, yeah, I think we just move on to the du- the dungeon. The? With, with the Blood Pact. Yes. yes. The dungeon. Catechist's Manor. Catechist's. <laughs> God damn! It. The story mode's really easy. Uh, I'm yeah, sure the other modes I, I, are I do fine like the too. First boss, like the, the first time running through, it, it's just insanity for anybody who doesn't know what they're doing with multiple deaths. While everyone was just laughing and hiding behind the right, like uh, the first boss with the uh, golem, mm-hmm. rockets flying everywhere and whatnot. So that, that that was a fun experience. I had, I had a good time with that. But explorable mode, uh, yeah. Well, like I'm sure they're fine. Um, you have to keep in mind that I got those three paths done one when we were not all level 80 and two 
two, when we were not all fully geared, and three, we didn't all quite know what we were doing. Like, even if you are level 80, it still takes a while to, quote unquote, master whatever profession you're playing. Um, and I've, I've actually had, like, a couple uh, guildies who are just like, they have trouble with some fights in AC that we either think are cakewalks, but they're like, CM is fine. We did that in, like, an hour and a half. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure they're fine. I just haven't set foot in that place in well over two months because of the blood pack to never ever do it again. Yeah. So what I happens have when you break tokens? this blood pack? Um, if someone breaks the blood pack before it is fulfilled, they must take their own life. That's what was decided. Uh, it's very much like a samurai warrior. <laughs> yep. You slit your belly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Throw yes. your intestines out. <laughs> I need to order a sword like online and wait till right. it arrives and then take my own life. <laughs> Make in sure a traditional it's a really manner. dull sword to feel out that pain. <laughs> take my own life in a very traditional manner. Yeah. Get it? Manor? Cauticus's manor? Oh, <laughs> Rone. I don't know. Uh, Durin, uh, New Brahma, anything from Cauticus's? No, thankfully I have not See, touched that place outside the I story. Always want, I, 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 I feel like the story ending was kind of stale. Like I wanted, story was I wanted shit anyway. no one, manor armor, yeah. but no one would ever run Cauticus's, so I just can't <laughs> get the armor. I hope this just do it with pugs, pugs, whatever. But no, what I mean, like the, pugs not actually the, the, the story story. No, but pugs are like, not good at all. Yeah. No, no. Do they actually do it? Is the question. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah I see. It, I see it while I'm like in um, Queensdale. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of of the next dungeon we're gonna do and pugs, I had someone in Twilight Arbor when I was on my Ellie tell me. Um, to not tell them how to play a warrior because I wasn't Ellie. I was like, oh, you're going down a bad road if you continue yeah. this. Because <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I main a warrior and also have an 80 Ellie. Yeah. You have a couple 80s now. Yeah, well, my thief is in the like around 50, so she's getting there. I just can't be bothered to actually play a thief. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but no, it's like what I was saying, like... Just ending quickly on uh, Codicus is it's like the, the story final boss. There's just a couple bosses that we're just gonna talk about that are just okay. Start auto attacking and then I'll be back in five minutes after I get a drink. Yeah, it's. You, it's I don't know. A, I'm really disappointed that that dungeon is the one that really sucks because, like, fighting indoors is not something you do in like really tight spaces. Anyway, it's not something you do in Guild Wars and I guess MMOs in general very often. Um. And I guess that's for a good reason, because the camera just sucks when you're trying to swing it around when you're in a hallway. It's bad times. And that is probably what led to frustration more than anything else, is Guild Wars 2 is very much a game of see the red circles, get out of red circles. Mm. Um, yeah. And when you're in a hallway where the red circles cover the entire space and you cannot get out of red circles, that leads to some angriness, some cursing. Some things said that one might regret later. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's Codicus's Manor. Um, yep. I, guess, I guess the next one down the list is uh, is the Twilight Arbors. We, we I fucking love Twilight Arbor. Too. Fucking love it's, Twilight Arbor. I, I like it. It's it's a really solid design. You're 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 snaking through, and it's like that is above ground, isn't it? Sure. Let's go with speaking. that. Let's go with that. You just it's it's very much like a, I, I guess a Zelda style where you're just in this trench the entire time. Sure. Just, just Again, let's go with that. Iron Brigade. Oh God! You mean trench? It, it sounds like it sounds like you you are slightly disagreeing with me, Shimboy. <laughs> Wait, no, I don't. No, I can't are figure you being out. Oh, okay. I have no idea what's going on. Um, no, I think Twilight Arbor. I don't know where it's actually located. If you look, the map just sort of ends. So maybe it's like to the left of the waypoint there. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, what, one of my favorite bosses, uh, at least story wise, is in this dungeon, and that's like the the second, uh, but basically like the, the spider boss. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy's tough. He, he is, he is tough, but I mean, like it's it's a mechanic that is relatively simple to, to grasp. Like if you stand still, you die, mm-hmm. and it, it's I mean for the most part a range fight. But it, my it's, it's favorite boss that, like, in, in that is also from Todd Arbor story, but it's the uh, the cat lady. Oh yeah, the one who polymorphs people. Mm-hmm. That's the best. Because I did it with Cynic, and he, when the boss died, was still a cat. So we stood there for another couple minutes, just healing the dog that he had to kill, just keeping him, keeping him as a cat. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, for those so, of you who don't yeah, know, pro tip: if, if you want to troll yeah. your friends, just make sure to set up a healing build and run 
Yeah, but our for story those of you who haven't done TA Story, there's a boss that pretty much the main mechanic is they turn you into a cat and there's these dogs around the room that you basically have to solo with these cat skills. And once you kill one of the dogs, you, you know, go back to your normal yeah, you self. But the thing is, whatever form you are, when you're, you know, your normal form, the dogs are allies, so you can heal them. So if the fight ends, which was the case with us, and some person is still catified, um, you can just all start healing the dog and just infinitely keep them as a cat and just troll them forever. It's fantastic. You should all do that. It's the best. This. <laughs> yeah. Twilight Arbor, this story, the final boss of story was really tough, if I remember correctly. When you have to fight, you pretty much have to fight all of Destiny's Edge at once. Yeah, I mean, it was the one time where you could play, or where you could kill Logan Thackeray, and I was like, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, the initial fight, like the, the unless your, your group is like really well coordinated and like, we need to burst this guy down, burst this guy down, it does get a little bit hectic uh, halfway through there. But I, I think I think for the most part, it's a good balance of People will be falling on their ass, but nobody will be dying. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's tough because once you kill one of them, Fowlane shows up and you're just like, oh, I guess we should kill the ads first before we focus her. And then she's Yeah, it is like, a little confusing. And then she she's revives them. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, shit. let's revive them. Oh, man, maybe we should focus her. And then you focus her, and then the rest of them kill you. And it's like, well, this is quite the situation we find ourselves in. It is a conundrum. Yeah. But Todd Arbor Explorable is great. Except That's the what one. the wiki's for. If people yeah. like are confused, they can look that up. Yep. Hold on. We can just summarize this podcast in one phrase. Check the wiki. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's that's why this isn't necessarily a wiki. This is more just like things we general like, feel, things we don't like. general feeling. Um, I you'd really like, to see like change in there. Or? In story, I haven't done it in so long. <laughs> in explorable, they need to rebalance the blossom spawn rate. Oh yeah. Especially in that room with the worm. I'm sure, wait, Duran, you did this with us. That room's not fun. Which one was that? The one with the worm boss. Oh, yeah. The one no, with the giant no, worm boss. No, no, not at all. That one's on every path. That's not fun. No, that is not fun at all. They need, that, that needs to fucking go. <laughs> at least I, like, I do like it. It's, uh, the dungeon as a whole is a change from the traditional, like, talk to this person and get the path set right away, whereas you can choose your path on the fly. Like, it, it, it asks you, do we want to go left or right? And then, like, it asks you again, do you want to go up or down? And it's like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but, like, that worm room, if they made it, so once you killed the rest stuff. of them, once the champion spawns, the other one stops spawning, it'll still be challenging because that boss hits hard, but it won't be as dumb. Because, like, if you focus the boss, you can have a whole bunch of things spitting shit at you. And if basically, you kill all you don't those like things, you're never going to damage the boss. Yeah, because it's... Or at least they have to tweak the rate at which they respawn. Because currently, even with a high DPS team, you pretty much need to focus the boss. Because if you have a low DPS team and focus the boss, you can have all the other lesser vines just spitting shit at you. And if you burn through the lesser vines, they're going to keep spawning to the point where you won't be able to damage the boss at all. It's really poorly balanced when it comes to that. But other than that, Todd Arbor's fun. I have my ring that I make way too much money off of. You should buy my rings. Yes, now Probably. now on not sale. Yeah, I actually now. don't have any up on the trading post currently because my one sold last night and I made 22 gold off of it, something like that. Jesus, good lord. That's more all than jelly. I've probably earned my entire time playing Guild Wars. I earned it in about two hours. Yep, fuck you too. <laughs> so basically what we're saying is you need to start paying me. I want a cut of this for running you through TA all the time. No, because you're getting your own rewards. You're getting your own rewards. I don't want to hear it. (laughs) You're getting your own TA tokens. You can choose to do with them what you wish. Also, the shoulders, the heavy shoulders, don't match with anything aside from the TA chest piece. It makes me sad because I have them and I don't know what to do with them. I I will say, and and, uh, this is just like a pro tip for any char who wants to look oh, absolutely fabulous. Is yeah, one of our guildies, Rayos, basically has. Does he have just the full Twilight Arbor set? He, I think, now has the full set, yes. So it's just a char dressed up in the plant person. like like This is the light armor. It looks hilarious. And then his color scheme is brilliant. He's like so, pink, yeah. lime green, and like sky blue. And it's glorious. When we were in the EB puzzle yesterday, 
some yeah, random guy who we helped out was just like, hey, your char, it's fabulous. And he's just like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he says he, apparently like every time he's in uh, L.A., he gets a message from one person. Just saying, like, like, like the same different. person? Not, not the same person. Just like every, like one person at least will always just comment about his outfit. Oh, okay, yeah, it's pretty great. So if you want to look fabulous, Twilight Arbor is the dungeon for you. Yeah, as a char, if you're if you're having issues trying to figure out a good set and you're clothy, go for that. Except the the male version has some really weird V neck chest openness going on. It's kind of strange. Again, if you're a char. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just, just next, just accept all. Next one, I think is is at least I have, I've done a few explorer runs, but I still have yet to do the the story run. Is uh, Star Wars Embrace? Um, Star Wars Embrace story is terrible, except for the last boss. Like, there's a boss that spawns all these golems at like twenty five or seventy five, fifty, and twenty five percent, and they throw shit at you, and they're annoying, and I never hope. I hope I never have to do that fight ever again. Except you have to in one of the oh. explorables. Except they're all at once. Oh no. It's terrible. But yeah, this the story mode, final boss, is basically the um forgeman. So you just have to like throw shit at him and avoid having lava dumped on you. Um which doesn't sound too exciting, but it is. But at the end, there's the best Terminator reference in the history of video games. So you should do it. That's about it. Val, our AC, AC, or, or fuck, what am I saying? Arena Net likes to have a lot of Terminator references in their stuff. As they should. Basically, yep. yeah, he falls into the lava and there's a giant Terminator reference. It's fantastic. They, do you remember that Guild Wars 1, um, what is it called, event? They had like a Terminator thing when they added the Arena event, the April Fool's thing. Oh, yes. Yes, they did. When um, they added the... The Team Arena Commando. Yeah. Oh, the Commando class. That's what yeah. it was. They had a giant Terminator. I think it was Terminator 2 specifically. I want to know uh, what quest they chain. with April Fool's. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, it's, Sorrow's Embrace. It's coming up. Slowly. Wait, third, which, which paths have you done in Sorrow's Embrace? Um, I've done the uh, Dredge Mining Path, and I did another one with you that involved more Dredge. The Dredge Mining Path, is that the one with the two golems at the end? Yes. Well, those are okay. like four yeah, four golems we just burned down, and then the two that was like, fight this guy, now fight this guy. And I did, like, the one, this actually, yeah, I do have an issue with this fight, because they shoot, like, electric AoEs at you that you just have to take the damage. Yeah, pretty much. It's like the LE static field. Yeah. You and I, I, like, I like the mechanic of like you have to shoot, you have to go back and forth with the damage because the, the boss, like you can actually hurt the boss, but he just buffs one golem to make it invulnerable, so you have to hit the other one and then back and forth. Yeah, and it's like that alone is cool. They could do some big like you know shots or just do range attacks, but like I would dodge evade the like projectile and still get hit with the AOE. Yeah, because the projectile would land where you were, so you know start up the static field, and then you would dodge into the static field. And bad times. Yeah, sad, sad face arena net, because that's, I mean, that's not the, cool. the main mechanic in that fight, the bouncing between the two bosses at the end, is actually really neat. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love that. That features in another path, actually, in one of the other ones, after you fight the three golems, I don't remember which one it was, after you fight the, uh, the three golems at once, there's a champion and a legendary in the same room. Oh, and they snap. Both, and the legendary spawns veterans. It's intense. But the way we ended up doing it is we cheesed the hell out of it. You can apparently pull the champion by itself, and we just sort of walked out of the room with the champion. And had there was like a two staircases um, that formed like a ninety degree angle with each other with a pillar in the middle. So we had Revan jump up on the pillar, grab the boss's attention, and just stand there so he couldn't get attacked while we killed the boss. Wow. <laughs> you know, video games. And it was funny because he died up there, and I was using my banner, and I'm like, hmm. I wonder if this kind of physics will work because I couldn't target the top of the thing because it was below me. So I targeted the side with my banner to res him and the banner flew in sideways, was stuck in the side of the pillar, completely horizontal, and it resed him. It was nice. Great. It somehow that worked. Sounds crazy. 
I'm like, I wonder, as I was casting it, I'm like, I wonder if this cockamamie physics is going to work. And it did. <laughs> so yeah, warrior banners. You can have fun with them by placing them in strange places. That sentence it, taken out of context could be <laughs> kind of weird. Yep. No, not not at all. I, yes, big time. But no, it's uh, one thing I will say that I love about uh, uh, Star Wars Embrace that it's just I'm slightly motivated to run the dungeon is the uh, the like, the cloth helmet is basically a stormtrooper helmet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And, and like, if I ever got off, you know, it my ass and just started and making that, a set that was basically that a stormtrooper set. It would work, but I don't know. One of the I think it's that dungeon does a really good job at storytelling compared to the other ones because it doesn't stop and give you the stupid cutscenes as much, but it gives a lot of the storytelling over a PA system, which is something that the fractals do really well. Oh yeah. So it's just like ambient in the environment telling the story of the place instead of having to stop and have the side by side cutscene that everyone just skips anyway. Yeah. And, well, except for me and then Shin Boy is yelling at me that like, <laughs> you did. You need to press, you know, skip for the cutscene. It's like, no, but I want to watch it. And then I, I end it, and then there's this naked char in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that one that I was pissed off. It was at the end. One of the bosses, the end boss in Twilight Arbor is all the same, but it's a different version of it. And two of them spawn ads, and one in particular, they follow you around. So we're all running there trying not to die, and Thurb is sitting in the cutscene. I'm just like, Thurb, get out of the cutscene. Thurb, get out of the cutscene. We're all going to die. Get out of the cutscene. And then he gets out of the cutscene. We get our rewards, and then we all die. It's fun. No, you can you actually just, troll people that way. If you stayed in the cutscene, you would have been invulnerable. <laughs> I would have been. But everyone else would have died, and they would have yelled at me, and I don't want that to happen. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Sars Embrace. I did each path once just so I could get the title, then I don't know if I'm going to go back in there. Maybe for the Stormtrooper helmet eventually. Yeah, Which hopefully, hopefully they, they, they add some stuff that makes it like really interesting. Not that I, like, you know, there's anything that isn't interesting in that fight. It's just... See, this really is this is that. what we were talking about before with revamping the dungeons and everything. This is their biggest problem, in my opinion. If you don't want to go for the title and you don't want the gear specifically from that dungeon, there's absolutely no motivation to actually do them. Here, here's the reason why I don't want to do that dungeon. It's the trash. I am, I am like, I, I see it enough in World vs. World. I really just don't want to fight a bunch of dredge where there's like three veterans that will hit the gong and give everyone in the group a... 30 second like you know protection uh, re- re- and regeneration and, and damage and it's just like wow this makes this fight so much more annoying since we aren't doing as much damage to him it's just it's like, not difficult every... it just takes forever no yeah it's it's not hard it just makes the thing take freaking forever and then like once they do that buff they go around like stunning everybody yep I think Darren and Noob need to come on more dungeon runs with us so they can I, share I, horror stories. I will say I've, gr- I've grown yeah. to hate Dredge in general. Yeah, yes. dude, fuck Dredge. The I Dredge tonic is why. scary! I, I kind of regret freeing the Dredge in Guild Wars 1 Slaver Exile. I think we should have <laughs> killed the Dredge along with just the Storm Summit Dwarves. Like, what yeah. did we gain by freeing these blind moles? Didn't we free the Dredge in Saros Furnace? Saros um, Furnace? Like, yeah, Saros Furnace. Like, like, machine? Yeah, and um, well, like in, sort of in the explorable, aren't they like trying to? No, no, not Saros rise up and Saros Furnace. Oh, no, no, no. Saros Furnace was that's, something that's else. Yeah. Saros Furnace was um, wasn't that something else? Or was that the Etten? No, 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 because basically the Dredge were being what is it called enslaved by the Stone Summit, and then in the Eye of the North, um, whatever it's called, Slaver's, Slaver's, Slaver's Exile. Exile, you kill Duncan the Black and then free the. No, no, I'm you didn't it. kill Duncan Black. You put Pain Inverter on him and then caused an infinite loop of damage that killed you instantly, <laughs> and you laughed <laughs> because he reflected damage, and then you put Pain Inverter on him, which reflected damage that he dealt, and then you just hit him once, and you would instantly die. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh God, mechanics they're great. Go yeah, ahead. um, Stars Embrace. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. It's a thing. Yep. What's next? What do next we got next? The list is. The, the the char hometown oh, fight the oh the best cutscene in the game you mean it, was it Citadel of Flame I just I just know a COF it's Citadel, Citadel of char of flame, yeah. char on fire is what I call it <laughs> Cathedral of Flame in Eye of the North that's what it is it's Citadel it's really like a cathedral yeah it, well it's Citadel of Flame now it was Cathedral of Flame 
Oh, it was anyway. royal? Yeah. Yep. Okay. No, it was religious. So, guys, I want to interject for just a second, then I'll let you get back to COF. But I just want to point out that Cynic totally was around. He was just fucking in the... Yeah, I know, right? The goddamn, I was going to point out... Uh, Persona 4 uh, Golden Thread posting it up in there, so... Right, it's like three minutes ago. <laughs> oh, no. It's Elf Confess oh, Cynic no. posting gold, Persona, gold, or Persona 4 Golden Thread. <laughs> Two minutes ago, Self Confess Cynic. Like, there's... There's on the front page. There's of Giant Bomb forums. Three of the f- top five recent posts were from Cynic talking about Persona <laughs> that Four. Ass clown. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, sorry. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> that. Oh well, yeah. What the hell? Let's see. Out of the on my friend stream. Let's see. One, two. Everything except for one thing is Cynic. Jesus yeah. Christ. One hour. We have message though. We have asked him, like, are you coming on the podcast? And he's like, no. <laughs> crickets. He was just he gave offline crickets on while Steam. he was posting on the forum. How dare I you? I mean, look at him. A dude has a knife. But yes, I hope it's usable. I'm just reading his posts. Hashtag shots fired. Hashtag he posts shots images fired. and everything. What a son of a, son of a bitch. That son and of a bitch. The best part is, even though he's going to edit this, he won't actually hear any of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Cynic. <laughs> That's basically what I learned while doing all these dungeon runs, is fuck you, Cynic. Yep, that, that is the basically. underlying key. Yeah, okay. Be- I believe you might have even said that a few times on some dungeon runs. <laughs> <laughs> no, only only in Fractals. Oh, okay. But we'll get to that. Uh, that's we'll, what, get to that's that. I... we'll get to Fractals. We'll get to Fractals. God, Fractals. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's COF. It, it, I mean, the story is cheesy as hell, but it's awesome. It's so campy and great, and I love it. And we should totally do that after this run. Go back through COF Explorable to show you I, two I who haven't done it. I, I mean, not Explorable story. Soon. Oh, but anyway. yeah, I'm down for for COF story. I'm not going to spoil it. This is actually the one story mode I really don't want to talk about because everyone should just do it and experience the greatest cutscene in, in the game. Yeah, and and then furthermore, it has one of the best like final story boss fights. Like it's it's a great design. I really hope they keep it. Um, it's great because it's not dependent on on your build yeah, or your gear yeah. or anything. It's just like everyone has to work together to get like to do this these actions to get everything done, and it's yeah, it's nothing to do with skill. Well, right, a lot of the, a lot of the better boss fights seem to be in story modes, which I don't know if that's by design or just is how it worked out. If only they had better rewards in the story dungeons, we'd I'd do them. But yeah, I think one weekend we're just gonna pick and go through all of the story modes. I'll do it on an alt. Yeah, that'd be fun. That way, because it's really annoying when I'm on my Ellie. I'm like, "Hey, does anyone have story mode in this? So we can actually get into explorable." And then everyone's like, "No." And then I have to switch over to my warrior, and then boringness. <laughs> hundred hundred blades every six seconds, and then the dungeon's over. Yeah, um, explorable is interesting. This is one of the ones that had to change because people were farming it. Um, specifically, path two, you can still farm it, um, just with the diminishing returns. It's not as worthwhile um path three path one is really easy path three is not yeah i'd Don't say i've path only three. done like the only time i was able to get a group for them was when they were doing like that when it was still we're just farming this one path over and over again yeah if you, if you look if you look at map chat in in lines arch you'll see you know farming uh, you know looking for group honor of the waves and for group ac um then you'll see looking for group cof path one and two only because no one wants to do path three sad face because path three is really annoying and the first room is the hardest room because there's these torches all around um and coe which we'll get to there you know the mechanic we needed to shut the uh the lasers off oh yeah imagine that but spread out across a large room with infinitely respawning ads that are right next to the control panels and it, it's i assume when you hit the control pad it like interrupts your attack? What do you mean? Oh, if well, they hit it, you, it, it interrupts you. Yeah. And, and while, while everyone's trying to sync up and, like, turn the thing off, mm-hmm. it, uh, like, if they hit you, it, it cancels it. Yeah. That's that's a little annoying. That, well, that what, what we do is, anyone who's listening to this who wants to get into dungeons, make sure you do this heart quest. It's in the char starting area. It's just south of the little town, whatever the hell that town's called. It basically involves you killing a whole bunch of ghosts, and the... Heart vendor, 
the Karma Vendor Archer sells these things called Ash Legion Spy Kits. <laughs> yeah. Which let you stealth for 10 seconds, provided you don't move. But you can still channel things. So basically the way it works is we all synchronize when we're going up to these things. Um, all run up to them, use our Ash Legion Spy Kits, and start channeling so the things don't aggro us. It's really cheesy, but it works sometimes. Yeah, don't do Path 3. It's bad. <laughs> okay, so they, they need to fix Path 3. Yes, that and there's a protection event where, similar to World of World Rest PvP, you need to capture a point, and once you hold the point, you need to hold it through five waves of enemies, which doesn't sound like a big deal until you realize that the enemies spawn inside the point. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I do. I would like to see... Like just maybe like some of the di- like the types of dynamic events we see in the world brought into the dungeons, like you know hold a point. Um, but yeah, if they're spawning right in the room. That's not cool, bro. Yeah, and there's a lot of them, and they're those really stupid. Hey, I have this giant flamethrower on my arm. You're gonna die now. I hate it's those hard. guys. And there's like four of them at once. Ugh, it's bad. It's real bad. They cripple you, Yuck. and then burn you, and then you die, and then you're really upset at everyone, including ArenaNet. But yeah, the other two paths are really easy. Uh, path 2 is still fun. Although I do like the, the final bosses on all three paths. One of them, you just pretty much kill till it dies. The other one, you don't aggro the boss at all. I mean, you don't hit the boss itself at all. And basically need to hit a big crystal in the middle, which is kind of neat. And then the third one... Um, there's just some guy who just does a whole bunch of knockbacks, but there's lava everywhere, so you, you don't want to get knocked back. Otherwise, you will go into the lava and die. It's interesting. It's fun. Um, yeah, that's about it. COF. Yeah. Easy, easy, hard. Um, next one, we're going to do a lot more than ones that I, I have history with, just because uh, I guess we would like doing the higher tier stuff. Yeah. Or, I don't know. High end like, PVE. Uh, Serious business. <laughs> Woo. Cheering. <laughs> Honor of the Waves. I can just hear like name. us mentioning it name. at the time of like you know Riven will be listening to it. We'll hear just a groan emit from across the wow. What's wrong with Honor uh, of the, the Waves? The country. He just hates the water pass. Oh yeah, mm. I don't blame him. <laughs> I don't mind him. I mean, like well, he, I, I he like hates underwater combat though, doesn't, doesn't he? Yeah, we'll see that. Just, yeah, I mean, as do I, a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, it can, uh, it can I, I agree. It's definitely work. better it's than most MMOs, like it but it is it is underwater combat. I don't know. I had, underwater I had combat against like boss is kind they, of annoying. They liked using spear underwater as a mesmer, and I'm like, but you only get like three out of the five abilities are useful. The other two are which just which mesmer weapon throws music at people? Um, that's the trident, the staff. Okay, version. that's the one I would use. Yeah, well, I mean, I like using that, but the damage is just is laughable. It doesn't matter. You throw music at people. Kill them with the sound. He has a point. That seems like you could a Paragon move. And kill them with rock. It does. Yeah, I wish you could just import um, certain music into that skill, and I would just have just the heaviest of metal <laughs> throwing oh, it at people. Just have ACDC them, like, <laughs> screaming. Yeah, I would just pick, like, not even a song that I like. Just pick, like, some the heaviest death metal I could find and just throw that at people in PvP. All right, right on. Um... But yeah, it's like there's a lot of solid boss fights in there. I definitely love the. Uh, oh god, what's the one where it's the the guy who puts people in like uh, ice blocks and you have to like break the ice block while he's healing or something or while he's beating you up. There's one like that in Coe. I don't remember how it was. You know which which path it was. I'm looking it up now. Because I know Path Two does not have that. That's the butcher. No, Path One is the butcher path. I don't remember. The Butcher Path doesn't have it. The Butcher Path is also really easy. If you're going to farm Honor of the Waves, do the Butcher Path. It takes like 20 minutes. Oh, and I figured out, you know how um, for a while we were confused as to why no ads were spawning on the uh, Warm Boss and the Butcher Path? Turns out it was Cynic's fault. <laughs> oh, nice. Because there's a whole bunch of random enemies in the room with that boss, and they're having like some sort of conversation. I don't remember about what. And you pretty much basically, go in there. Basically saying about how many, like, you know, bears they've beaten up. Yeah, let's go with that. And pretty yeah. much you kill all the ads and then the boss turns hostile and you kill him. Turns out if you let that conversation finish, the ads will keep keep spawning all throughout the boss fight. 
and Cynic wanted to let the conversation finish. <laughs> so he's the one who was the cause of the infinitely respawning ads. So what you're saying is skip cutscenes? I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and go out on no, a limb here and say scene. that uh, maybe ArenaNet might be at fault here because you shouldn't be punished for wanting to hear all of the dialogue that they recorded. Yeah. Yeah, but I just like to blame things in Dungeons on Cynic. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, get that. Yeah, that's fine. So, so, I mean, who doesn't like to blame things on other people? Come on. <laughs> um, I'm a good person. Especially on Australians. I yeah. I mean, they are playing it while upside down. So, there's True. that. They're at a distinct disadvantage right away. <laughs> yeah, Cynic's fault. The rest of that path is easy. Um, the underwater paths... They're okay. They're not, we, you can pull the boss out of the world in one of them. At least you could last time I did it. What? Yeah, th- there was like there was a spot to do it, but whenever we tried, finding him underwater was so much better. It's like they actually planned. Like people will try to get him above water, and he just. <laughs> he so wait, you're saying the boss that's hurts. underwater is easier to fight while underwater? You don't say. It's madness. I know. Things are easier if you do them the way they're designed to be done. Who knew? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I mean, like the, the trash is a little bit like uh, of a rough fight underwater, just because I guess people are getting. Are In not one used of the paths, they they throw two legendaries at you back to back for no apparent reason, and they're, they're both really they're annoying. Really likes to just throw two legendaries at you, they're mean, and they're like the same exact one. It's weird. They're like the um, the big giant corrupted Oakart things, but they have way too much health and take way too long. They corrupted so, Oakarts yeah. underwater. No, no, no. This was on like the bow of the ship, oh, and then you oh, go underwater okay. right after that. Because you have to remember, the ship is sinking, so the parts that are quote unquote underwater should not be. Um, so yeah, they're right on the front, and then you go back inside, and there's like water right there. Gotcha. So water right behind the bow of the ship, normally not good. <laughs> yeah. I'm no maritime expert, but it seems like a bad idea. Also, I feel bad for that NPC. Because he's destined to stand outside that dungeon for all of eternity and just tell people how his home is sinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's really depressing. Just right? I'm that. like, oh, man, I feel bad for you. Yeah. Honor of the Waves is fun. Um, I have the helmet from there. It's really funny. It's just a big old wolf head thing. I really like that gear, and it has some nice stat spreads. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and guess the light armor um, looks bad. I don't remember. It, it pretty much does across I, the board. So. The dungeon. I will say, it sucks. I, I, I think Arena got a lot of, uh, like, heard a lot of people giving props to it, but just the idea of fighting on a giant iceberg with just, like, the code and buildings and all that is as cool as all get Also, I like that a lot of the dungeon is slanted. Yes. Oh, really? It's slightly it's annoying, awesome. but at the same time, it's like, okay, this makes sense. But it, I think it's awesome that it's slanted. Is it because, yeah. like, you're actually in the sinking ship? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. wow. Okay, yep. yeah. I got to run that place. The ship... The it's not called Honor of the Waves because of a story or whatever. The ship is called Honor of the Waves. Uh, okay, okay. Because Kodan have strange names for everything. Funny sidetrack story. We we're me and a friend of mine were discussing for some reason we got on the topic of Dwayne the Rock Johnson and if he was in Guild Wars, what would he be? And I said he would be a Kodan named People's Elbow. <laughs> oh wow. I thought that was funny. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All Coming right. soon, when the Codan are more expanded upon, one called People's Elbow, calling it now. Arena Net, you're welcome. <laughs> yes, yeah. Arena Net, please make that happen. Because <laughs> they listen to every single episode. Hey, we're going to have... We've got something coming up. Shh. It's a secret. we got something. We aren't I'm hinting right. at anything. Uh, <laughs> next dungeon on the list. Crucible of Eternity. Metrony. This place looks awesome. There's that. Yeah, it looks, The it's, big center room is very Star Wars-y. Yeah. Yeah, it is. The, like the, the teal lights. Like the, the upper amphitheater or whatever. Yeah, where you you don't really do anything in there. You just sort of walk through it. Yeah, it's it's like the, the room where we had to fight the waves of undead, right? Yes. I think they called that the cafeteria, actually. That's a great name for it. Also, the aquarium is in quotes. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else um, is in quotes. I, I haven't fought the um, the front door path, the final boss, which is basically there's this room full of lava. It's a really wait, tricky wait, fight. You weren't you weren't there for that when we did that. I, well, I was there when we cheesed it. 
but apparently oh. they've fixed it. Oh, okay. I haven't done that one since. Yeah, it's uh, so that one I can't comment upon. At the time, I was like, this is terrible as I'll get out. This needs Basically, to be there's like three lasers, and you need to fire them all at the boss at the same time, and they're all up Which leaves top. like two people for DPS. <laughs> yeah, because you need to constantly be firing these things, and you can't attack the boss like from that vantage point. So it, yeah, and if yeah. if you try going down to fight him like normally, if people are not on top, or actually I think even if people are on top of managing the lasers, he will just like make a bubble show up that pushes you into the lava, and so it's like okay, I might get a few shots in, but then I have to run back because you know the waypoints are just far as I'll get out that far into the dungeon, and so it's like okay, you guys keep working that laser because thank God his health doesn't regenerate when no one's attacking him. And yeah, but like, so you, you, we basically had three people on the lasers, then me and a ranger down on the bottom with max range longbow, and I was not even attacking. I was just buffing the ranger, and we literally had one person attacking the boss for the entirety of the fight. Worst part was, that took about the same time as a normal fight does. Yep, which is yeah. weird. But the other paths, oh. uh, Submarine Path, I think it is, is, is really good. Submarine, uh, I think that's the one with the, the Norn fight at the end, which... Is a lot of fun. They just um, fixed it's still a little it. buggy. Yeah. Just, uh, apparently, in the last patch, they fixed it. I haven't done it since. Basically, there's a whole bunch of electrified pillars around the room, and he does like the warrior great sword charge move, and you pretty much need to stand next to the pillar, and when he charges at you, move behind it, and he'll run into the pillar and get stunned, or just and, dodge him as he's charging. But yeah, it's yeah. It's, uh, it's just like playing El Tor with the bolt. It's like he he has a crap ton of armor, so you're doing two damage to him while he's not stunned. Quite literally two damage. And then when he charges and hits the thing, the buff goes away, and then you do your normal damage, and he dies really quickly. Mm-hmm. But that fight's really well designed. That's another one that I hope they do more stuff like that. Like, him and Kohler um, are both two really well-designed bosses. What do you think of the subject alpha? Like, well, first off, Dern or Noob, have either of you guys done COE? Uh, no, I have not. The next dungeon, I know Dern attempted it with us, and that went swimmingly. Yeah, yeah. that was... Aura. Yeah, we'll, we'll, that's, that was we'll get to that one. But subject <laughs> alpha, I, I do like the idea of a boss that it's. I mean, it's it's more or less that, that he is the face of Coe Explorable, because yes. you see him like three times in every run, and so he's he's just like he's the main bad guy. He is. But my main problem with subject alpha is, you know, the first room that you fight him in for most of the paths, it's like the the big long room. Mm-hmm. That is perfect for that boss, but I'm pretty sure the end of both front door and the experimental teleporter path, the rooms that you fight him in at the end are way too small. So you're it, just, well, the entire the floor is covered. Horrible, it's like, it's multi-tiered, and so what often ends up happening is he ends up getting stuck in the middle, and so range has to get really close to, or otherwise they're, like, obstructed, and mm. it just gets, it, it ends up uh, just getting into a bad place, and a lot of people die. The... The second set, I, I think you fight him in. There's like some uh, obstruction. There's like pillars in the way, but for the most part, it's okay. Yeah, but my main problem with Subject Alpha is not the fight itself. It's the rooms that you fight him in. Yeah, I, I love the Subject Alpha fight. Just like the, especially the first time you fight him, it's you, you're constantly having to move. You're constantly having to be ready to dodge. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Some of the rooms that's another are, that's another one that that could be really really great, but there's a few things here and there. The rooms that you find them in and the imprisonment crystals are both really dumb. The um, another boss in that in that dungeon is the uh, the plant one. That the, that's uh, that's a little crazy. Yeah. Oh, where you need to get the bombs to go off next to them. Yeah, you need you need people doing it's 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 another again another fight like the uh, sea of uh, char of char on fire dungeon that like it's <laughs> not necessarily damage or gear check it's. People just generic of whatever class they need to be need to be doing this, and people need to be doing that. And it's like we got to be like clearing all these sh- shrubs as they respawn, and other people need to pick up these weapons and like manage this stuff. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of mini bomb golems that like if you go near them, they'll get set off. Yeah, um, it's like it's these... the only way to damage the boss. Yeah, and they're also the only way to damage the boss. So there's these um, guns around the room that when you use them on the bomb golems, I read up in it, on it afterwards after we did it the other day, and apparently it only works once per golem. That's why we we're taking forever to do it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And then after that, they just that don't sense. listen. There's like, lol, no. Um, you basically use it on the golems, and they make a beeline right for the boss. That's how you have to do it. But the way we ended up doing it at the end 
It's pretty much just kiting them around until they got near the boss. Then we would run up to them and set them off, thus damaging the boss. It was interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool because you don't actually... It would help, but yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a fun fight. Yeah, once you figure it out, it's cool because it's one of the boss fights where you don't actually touch the boss at all and he doesn't touch you. It's really weird. I would like to see, like, we see a, that a few times in Ara, um, but it's, it's, th- th- there's but a, like a lot of good quality fights in there. Because the one thing that can kill you in that fight is also the thing that you need to beat the fight. Yeah. It's inter- it, that, I think, is a really cool design and something that I hopefully see them iron out and expand upon. And then there is Ara. Well, yeah. was there anything left in COE? No, COE's see, see done. It's such the a the story fight. mode is a bit of a joke. I mean, it's just like, it's the, the from what I remember through the nightmares, it's just a ton of range guys that are shooting at you with that, like, one shot you. No, that's only the last boss. In story? Yeah. I thought there was a. Like, You're no rifle. There's things, there's things, there's a bunch of them in Nara that dominate you. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's 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 move on to Ara. Ara. So, Duran, yeah. what do you remember from Ara? Um, I remember dying a fucking bunch and <laughs> yep. getting really fucking pissed and fucking raging out of it about thirty minutes into it. <laughs> yep, that sounds about right. <laughs> if you don't have a good team. <laughs> Well, it, it was mostly, I think, the, the one of the bigger issues was you guys had just gone through your run of Raw uh, the night before, so I don't think any of you were oh, mentally right. prepared. That's the night after. That's the night after Sears passed. Yeah, I don't think any of you were mentally prepared to run that place again, and I was not. And I was not mechanically prepared to run that place because I had been away from the game for a few weeks at that point. Yeah, you need nor, to. Nor was like gear prepared. So, yeah, but I mean. You can actually go through that whole loop because fight without getting hit. It's just tough, mm. and that's that's the fight. If you don't remember where we ended up, just saying no, we're we're done with this. Yeah, yeah. But the, a Ross story. This one, the, the sequence where we had to like say? carry the bomb from one thing to another was actually really cool. Once, once oh once, yeah, that thing's really fun. It up. Yeah, that's actually. I mean. I wouldn't say it's gotten to the point where we get that flawlessly, but that's still, even though we get through it most of the time and we know what to do, it's still really fun. Especially, if, it's actually more fun when you screw up. <laughs> you're just like, because you know, you see the guy do this big old wind up and everything, and then he throws it about half a foot <laughs> because you screwed up your targeting. Well, it was it was annoying because like I I just could not get it through my head that like you're not targeting where you want it to where you, where you want that person to be standing. You're targeting. You want to target past them because otherwise you are oh, literally. Are you saying it at the sports spot. the sports champion in you did not come out and decide you need to actually hit the person like in the chest as opposed to throw it right at their feet? Turns out, yeah. <laughs> I think I did sports that. Sports like champion times. and all of us video game playing guys did not <laughs> did not come out. No, it was it was my video game guy being like drop drop the um the, the the targeting glyph on the character and it'll be good, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what you would think, but no. You would think, oh, this guy's standing here. I want to throw it here. Yeah, pretty much. Nope. One time where video games were not video games. Yeah, that's really fun. Um, so that was pretty much my only hats. real experience at that place. Yeah, you have, you have to run with us again, because we've pretty much got that Lupicus fight down to the point where we're getting no grubs on him, and he's going down pretty easy. Oh, man. Except for, like, do you still have the issue where, like, the one will just spawn right on top of the NPC and just like, well, crap, we can't stop That's that. just, um, I forgot, that was just Sears Path. Oh, okay. Because nice. that's the only NPC that's melee. Ah, uh, I got you. Because, you know, the grubs spawn on the people in the party, including the NPC, and normally you stay at max range, so you have a little time before he gobbles it up. But, you know, if it spawns right next to him, he's going to be like, hmm, this thing looks delicious, and then just pick it up and eat it, and then you're done. Yeah, it's like fast food. Yeah, pretty much. I want right on. Pizza. Um. <laughs> story, story mode is really awesome. I, I like end. everything before you get airborne. Oh, no, I think I it's fine once you, get, once you get airborne. The, the events in the air are really awesome, if not tedious. Yeah, They're really awesome. They're really cool, at least to look at. 
you uh, the thing that a raw story mode is good at more so than I think anything else in the personal story, which I know you've touched upon in other episodes, is like you feel like shit's going down. Like okay, this is it until the end, and then you're disappointed by the last boss fight or the lack thereof. But yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel like um, most of the other events, including the uh, the shooting things in the air, as well as um, a few of the boss fights on the ground, like the mouth one was pretty interesting. Um, it's just, I don't know, I feel like the success of a raw story mode is less about the mechanics and more of the atmosphere of it. Because, like I said, it feels like you're at the end, like this is it, which I think they did a good job of. But that last boss fight, ugh, ugh. just go AFK for 10 minutes and then come back and you beat the game. I don't know. Have, has anyone besides me actually done story? Like, yeah, have I have. Story? And it, it's, I mean, it, it is nice that they they rushed and had an actual like you know, there there is an ending to the story mm-hmm. when the game was like shipped. But I yeah. just wish they had taken more time working on it. It's I don't know. I feel like most of the dungeon is fine except for the the very very end. Yeah, that's that's the one issue. Yeah, which you would think would be the part that would be the best, but. Disappointment. I am disappointed in the Zaitan fight. Spoilers, you fight Zaitan. Oh shit. What? What? <laughs> Big old pop up that shows up, slay Zaitan or kill Zaitan or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, it's it, the story mode is it, it's a story mode. It's fun. Um, go in with some guildies, have a campy old time. The explorable, there's definitely a lot of like really good boss fights. Some boss Mursat fights that we, we, we have issues awesome. with. That we've talked about in earnest in other podcasts. Yeah, Mursat Path really is great. If you want a good balance, because we normally do Forgotten Path, just because it's the shortest and easiest, if we want to just going in for tokens. Um, but Mursat Path, if you're doing one just for straight up fun, and you don't care how long it takes, do Mursat Path, because Mursat Path is great. Like Once the holidays are over, I will I will come to you asking to do that. Yeah, the boss fights in there are very entertaining. They have cool, unique mechanics. Like, there's one that spawns a whole bunch of illusions, and then when they come back to the center, you need to, like, get behind these, like, barrels and bales of hay and everything to protect yourself from it because it's basically a one-hit kill. But each time the boss does it, it removes one of them. So it's, like, in the meantime, you're, like, trying to DPS race to get the boss down. We're also trying to fend off all the illusions. It's really fun. I found a spot where you can't get hit, but that's a separate topic. <laughs> that's me. That's me cheesing the dungeon. So I guess we'll uh, from, like we'll now go th- just through the fractals and then. No, no, on one last thing. Don't do oh. Jotun Path because every single boss, every single one, is bugged horribly. One of the bosses, so- it has a mechanic where you get tarred and you need someone to like pour this. It's basically, I think it says 300-year-old whiskey on you, which is always a good decision in every situation. <laughs> um, and it's supposed to set you on fire, but get you out of the tar. But when we tried it, it just set you on fire. Oh, shit. <laughs> and when, if you were, like, down and you got tarred and then you rallied off of something, you would not have any of your skills and would need to relog to get your skills back. Oh, good lord. Yep. And this was happening in the middle of a boss fight. So, I, like, what, how do you guys feel about them going through and doing this revamp of, of these dungeons and stuff when some of them are still broken and we, we, don't, we still don't really have a feel on how those mechanics will actually work out? Like, are they just going to replace these before know, they I have a chance like... to actually, you know, play them through? Or, I mean, it just seems a bit I know, early. I could see them... I could see them doing something like, okay, we want to revamp the dungeon system as a whole, and these ones are broken. Instead of fixing them and then revamping them, let's just revamp them. I, s- I suppose, but I mean, there, I, I feel like there could be some that could actually be, you know, interesting boss fights that we'll never know because they never bothered trying to fix them. Or yeah, I, like I guess I can't say they never bothered trying. It could be interesting. They just never did fix them and instead are just going to do this. Because, like, I saw the thing that kind of pissed me off was. I was looking at the patch notes from this past week when they fixed a lot of the things in Fractals and Dungeons. Um, a few bugs here and there in each dungeon. 
And I looked at it raw and I saw it was listed. And I was like, oh, good. They finally fixed Jotun Path. It turns out they just fixed an exploit in one of the other paths that I didn't even fucking know about. Yeah, and see, that's, that's the other thing, too, I've noticed, been noticing is, like, a lot of these, these fixes have been, like, they're fixing exploits, but they're not actually addressing the 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 real problems with these dungeons, like making them completable. Yeah, because um, Jotun Path, there's the last boss is you basically grab um, crystals that reflect the projectiles back at the boss. That's the only way to do damage. Um, and there's like a ring of fire around that gradually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And these crystals break, so you normally have a few as a backup just in the room. But the thing is, the NPCs, or the NPC, in their infinite wisdom, will just run into the ring of fire or not move when it gets smaller and will die. And if they die, the last, like the door that you need to go through to get the rewards doesn't open. <laughs> so you killed everything, but you can't get your reward. Great. It's weird. That, but, that reminds me of a dungeon that we ran. I forgot which one it was, where... Actually, I think it might, have, it might have been one of the fractals, so I may be getting ahead of myself, where the, the boss ended up dying like on a high ground, and so we couldn't actually mm-hmm. even loot the boss. Oh, that was a fractal. I think I was there. I think I was with you for that. Okay. I think I was with you for that. I think that was a snowblind fractal, but we'll get there. Yes. Um, but yeah, this path, though, and Rayos talks about this all the time because he was on that one, and he was eventually, eventually him and um, Crusarian both got through the door. This dungeon is so fucking busted that you can outbug the bug. <laughs> like snap the door that doesn't open if you have a thief or a mesmer and apparently it works with an le with um fighting flash too you can glitch your way inside the left part of the door frame and then thieves with um dagger pistol can spam like shadow shot or whatever that is and heart seeker just spam them back and forth to glitch your way through the rest of the door frame and into the room oh, jesus <laughs> So oh, the path is so busted that you can outbug the bug. It's great. And interestingly enough, that was the last path I needed for both my um, Ara leg armor and for my Dungeon Master title. So I was just auto running into the door, just yelling, "Why won't you open?" Because <laughs> well, like, because I couldn't do anything as a warrior, and the, while the thieves were trying to do their thing, I was literally just standing there, and every so often I would just attack the door. Just yelling at it. Just like, open, goddammit! Just yelling at it, trying to will it open. Yeah, that didn't work. Oh, that's great. That's great. No, it's not. It should not happen <laughs> in that way. No, you're right, it's not. Like, and, I, and, and what will probably end up happening is they'll fix the bug before fixing the door issue. Yeah, exactly. Like, they'll fix the exploit before actually fixing the major issue. So yeah, probably. If, uh, well, hopefully, just it's just with a whole new, two different a whole teams. New boss fight. Maybe, maybe that's what'll happen. I guess. Time will tell. Or, I mean, they could just leave the door open and just not have the rewards trigger until you kill the boss. There's that makes like, too much sense. You don't leave the door open. No... Were, you, were you raised in the barn, shim boy? You never leave the door open. <laughs> the My point is, there's no point to going in that room other than to get your rewards and to see the conclusion of like the story of that path. There's no enemies there. There's no bosses there. There's no puzzles there. It's just a room. With a thing that's important to the story that I'm not going to say in it. <laughs> like, I, I don't really understand. Want to do this path. I mean, important to the story of that path. Because um, yeah. all of the Ara paths um, deal with a specific race and their relation to the Elder Dragons rising. So, a bit of a spoiler here for the Mursat path. Actually, major spoiler for the Mursat path. Do you guys care if I spoil it at all at the end? Not really. Not, not really, no. Yeah, okay. I mean, folks can just, like, mute for a minute or two. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically the last boss is out of phase, quote-unquote, um, and you need to go into the same phase as them, and that's how you damage them. Um, and it turns out that at the end, which I thought was really awesome, that the Mursat, everyone wondered what happened to them, it turns out that when the Elder Dragons, like, started to awaken, they, like, created this some sort of weird-ass fucking phase portal and, like, went to another dimension of crazy nonsense to get away from it all. It was weird. Huh. Um, I thought it was interesting. Like they pretty much went like a half step out of phase with the world. So nothing was affected. Like they weren't affected by what was going on in it. And they just sort of came back in a different location. So they were away from everything. 
I thought it was interesting. So they kind of pussied out, basically. They kind of pussied out. They pretty much <laughs> were getting the hell out of Dodge. Let's use our crazy ass warping magic to do this. See you guys later. Have fun. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, the last dungeon we uh, was I just wanted to talk about. I'm just getting really tired, and I've got work soon. Um, is the fractals, and we'll just like quick fire between just like you know any, any memorable bosses you guys have done. Uh, starting off, which is like the aquatic ruins. Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna say I love the the whole darkness like mini fight. Yeah, I did that one before. That's and cool. I, I I do not like the giant jellyfish. No, oh god, <laughs> it's really easy. It's, it takes it's just forever. Just boring is the problem. Yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. There's, there's not, is there a mechanic to that fight? Because I, I didn't see it. Uh, shoot it till uh, it dies. The mechanic is press one alt tab. Okay. I I th- I think at higher fractals there might be something to do with. Well, I know, like if you those, get like close, cages electricity. Well, I know if you get close to the jellyfish, like melee range, it'll like do some pretty massive damage. Catch you and then you sp- and then you t- start nominating. Well, the damage yeah, isn't it, very high. You get eaten from time to time, but it's like oh. He's chewing on me. Yeah, yeah, the damage is very high. Repeatedly, like everything else. So, yeah. uh, I mean, that, like, what do you guys think of the dolphin thing? The the whole echo. It's kind um, of funny. I don't like dolphins apparently because dolphins are weak. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was pretty fun. Yeah, it's it's nice. Um, next uh next one, cliffside, the Doctor Manhattan one. That one's totally lame. I uh, really don't I would like, like to, the fire. I would like to have an opinion on that one, like the, but the, uh, when I ran it. The person we ran it with decided they had a way to cheese through it, and it broke the fucking fractal, which was supposed to be our oh, last God. one to do for that group. So it fucked the whole thing up. We didn't get to finish. Yep, apparently yep. they fixed that uh, the, that exploit in the most recent patches. Great. Yep. Also, that's the fractal that made me rage quit for the one and only time in Guild Wars 2. Oh, wow. It. Wait, new viewer there. Yep. I think. Yep. That's the Between one you and glitched Cynic. out of. Yeah. Cynic was so bad at it that he glitched out of the map and he <laughs> fell. So I was so like people didn't realize that standing in red circles is bad and will kill you. Um so basically when I was down, because pretty much everyone else in the party was already dead, I vengeance and then with my greatsword, whirlwind attacked off the edge and killed myself and left. So nice. pretty much got up and then spun attack off the ledge and died. It was totally worth it. Yeah, um, um, that one's okay. Yeah, the ending it's, of that one's cool. I, I do like the the progression of it. I like the jumping puzzles. The one issue I have is I think it's the the second or the third tier where you're fighting. Like it's it's the fire AOEs. Oh yeah, that's the one where I ended up rage quitting. And it's just I mean like the, it's it's always ends up in t- in tears because one person doesn't know what they're doing and will just. Either like run out there, auto attack the thing, or just they'll they'll die out on the fire. Someone else goes up there, usually ends up pick, picking up the hammer, gets that initial burst of damage, dies as well, and it yep. should yep. Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, also the fact that you need to hit that one like eight times. Like we get the mechanic, just let us move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, moving on then. I guess like we 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 talked about it. it's it's pretty straightforward. This although tough is after that is uh, Snowblind. The, the Snowblind's the best one. one. It's pretty great. I I really like it. I really I really like the the, the um like heat mechanic. Yeah, yes, so especially do I. during that boss the, fight. Yeah, the, yes. the, you mean like the the ice elemental thing? Yeah, whether you have like like light the campfires on fire or whatever, and then like the big snow um snowstorm comes in, knocks it all out. Disorients everybody, spreads them out, and you got to find your way back to the uh, the campfire. Yeah, I did that one earlier there. today, and my camera had me facing away from the boss, like you know, off into the forest there, and it was a blizzard mm-hmm. I couldn't see, and I legitimately like took my hands off my mouse and keyboard for like a second. I was like, Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I, had I will no say idea. I everything about like that lead up and that that boss fight, except for the fact that he does like he does a projectile attack that's hard to see in the middle of a blizzard. That will just knock you on your ass. Oh yeah, and, you don't have knockdown like get out of knockdown skills. It's really annoying. I mean, like it, I, I do, but I'm usually running like other skills instead. Mm-hmm. And then like that, or like I'll I'll get out of it and then immediately get knocked down again. Because yeah, I usually get much. spammed like two or three times, and like, well, I'm about to die from frost because I was disoriented, found out where the fire was, got knocked down, picked up a torch, got knocked down again, tried lighting it. 
got knocked down again. And it's just like, let me freaking well, light I, I think it helps having having one person be on lighting duty. Like, yeah. that helps yeah. a lot. Um, Definitely helps. That said, that middle boss fight is probably my favorite in terms of all boss fights. In terms uh, which of, like, one was mechanics that? And how cool is, is that? Is that the one we're talking about? The, uh, the one that... The one that makes everything dark and nighttime. Yeah, the, the ice elemental. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the ice, giant ice elemental. Yeah. That teleports people. It's actually really cool. I don't know. It, I don't know. The final boss of that fight is, is, is it's a bit of a just like. It's phase. like following procedure and being like, yeah. okay, he's gone to that phase. Time to do this. X, 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 Y, Y, Y. So it <laughs> does. X, 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 Y, 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 Y. Maybe if there was a way to throw in like randomness during the second phase, but mm. since it's like it's pretty much it's it's a a wave like it's it's once you know the pattern of those AOEs, it's really easy to avoid. Yeah. Like mm. laughably easy. Yeah, but then um, every so often the boss dies of bleeds on top of the platform and then you can't <laughs> loot his body. Yeah. And then, and then right before that happens, you get a PM from your friend saying, hey, look at this named exotic. I just got off the boss's <laughs> body. And then you're like, sweet, I hope I get one too. Oh, wait, I can't even loot his body. That's <laughs> sad. That's pretty much yeah, how it goes down. Fun. Yep. That's, cr- that's sad. Um, next up is the Swampland. Arguably Lost the shortest, Man. arguably the longest. Yeah. Depending, Depending on the coordination of your group. Yep, you need to grab wisps and bring them back to the start, but there's traps everywhere and a giant naked guy killing everyone. Great. Yep, he just randomly shows up. Hey, guys, what's up? Boof. I'm gone. Just like real life. Yeah. Happens and, all the time. Yep. Chilling out in swamps. I'm chilling in a swamp with a whole bunch of bear traps everywhere, and this big naked man comes and hits me with an axe. That's just a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. I do like the idea of just, like, the, the traps as the annoying mechanic. I don't like... The wall is constantly disappearing. Oh no! It's like, oh sweet, I'm gonna make it. Boom! Wall in your face. Ugh. Yep. It's. I mean, like, there is a skill to getting through there, but there's too much randomness to make it like a a challenge. It's more like it's more luck than skill. Yeah, because and I, no... I don't like when you have to do that. Yeah, the game point. can screw you over without you really being able to do anything about it. That's um, lame. Boss man, he's kind of fun. There's what, like there's a treant boss in there too, right? Yeah, I fought him earlier today. He's really easy. Okay, I do like the moss man. He chain like he he does like different phases, right? I think, yeah, like, he spawns ads and hits things, and he hits really hard. Yeah, it's a solid boss fight. Mm-hmm. Um, underground facility, I believe that's the dredge one. Yeah, they you used to be able to cheese that one. Something fierce, but they got rid of it. I actually I, I love that cheese just because it was no. so campy. Why did they, Anna? Why did you get rid of that? It was so perfect. So wait, what Actually, was the cheese then? I would just love to see. Well, okay, go ahead. And have you done that one? Uh, no, I've not. One, Darren? There's basically a whole bunch of switches that you need to stand on that open doors, and then the rest of your party runs through the doors while you stand on the switch. Uh-huh. Which, by the way, I love that mechanic. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it all leads to one big room where there's two switches on each side, or one sorry, one switch on each side, and um, that swings two doors open. Where you need to stand there and channel, like working on the, a control panel, quote unquote. Um, but what you could do, you used to be able to run on the ground underneath it and swing around on the like cliff behind it. And if you had swiftness, you could jump to the back of the room where the control panel is, which you're not supposed to be in. So since you're not supposed to be in it, the game would teleport you to the other side into the room. <laughs> And so basically, you would just skip the lead up to that first room. Yep, you could skip like half the fractal. So, but the idea of just, oh, just like you need to just jump through this like box. Yeah, jump through the box, and you get magically teleported to the other side. It was glorious. Yeah, hmm. and they got rid of it. That was sad. Yeah, that's real easy. Except for no, the last boss there is really annoying if you don't have a coordinated group. I don't like the fight where you have to. I think it, it's the second, like, it's the middle boss fight left path where you have to, like, pick up the guns and shoot the door. Oh, it's annoying. While guys are constantly respawning and killing you, and it's just like, okay, well, if we die, we have to run past all these guys again, pick well, up the guns. Thing with, same thing with the other side. You need to pick up bombs and drop them in front of the door. Yeah. But that's that's a little bit more like you're, you're able to move, you're able to dodge stuff still. With the gun you're just like standing in front of this door shooting at it and it takes way it, it, t- it takes just too long enough yeah to the point where that it's makes annoying. 
Yeah, so like you, everyone will end up wiping once, going back and redoing it. See, that's my general feeling with these fractals is like it's close, but they're just annoying enough to be really annoying. Yeah. To the point where I don't want to do them more Come, than I have to. Next up is one of my favorite ones, the Urban Battlegrounds. Which, oh, what, the which one is that? searing one. That, that's searing the one. searing. Oh, the yeah, searing the, the char. The, the one like where the you're mastering of that one. That, the beginning of that one kind of sucks. When, when yeah, it, it's a little bit tricky. Where it's just like you just have to fight through this and just get to this boss. If if they fa- if, I hate I don't want to use this word, but if they phased it a little bit better, so it's like okay, clear like defend this area sort of thing, and then the fight will slowly progress closer to the wall. If they, if they did it where it's like a fight towards the wall, and then you get to the wall, and then Dolphy drops down from the wall and is like. Oh man, they're at the gates. Time to use siege on them. Yeah, that that I think would be better, but it's it, it, I don't know. After the walls are down, it's a lot of fun fighting through yep. the streets. It's pretty cool. Yep. Killing chickens. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that last boss fight is pretty interesting. He's really not tough, and then he'll hit you once, and you'll be dead somehow. And you're just like, wait a minute, how'd that happen? Because he hits hard, mm-hmm. even on level one. Next up is the Grawl, the volcanic oh, rectal. Uh, actually, I feel like that's pretty easy, just overall. Not having played the later versions, but like... The yeah, it, it, get, it definitely gets tougher at the, the higher levels with Agony, but I mean, just like the mechanics just as a, as a whole, I so, do like... So, in that boss fight, you know when the boss like um, builds up that shield, right? Yeah. For a long time, everyone in my group, including myself, always thought that you had to kill the ads that spawn to break down that thing. Nice. It's not failing. And then nice. someone realized, hey, we just hit it. Oh. Well done. No, because what when a- he puts up the shield halfway through, it's, what is it called? You have to throw boulders at it. And mm-hmm. so we thought it's not just hitting it because that didn't work before. Maybe we have to kill the ads. Yeah. Maybe you guys are just bad. Yep. Maybe that is it. That's the reason I'm going with. What I don't like is, I mean, I, I love the Indiana Jones boulders on fire that you have to outrun. I do like that. I just don't like when someone dies in the middle of it. You can't. It It's infinitely harder to get them back up. Yeah. What I, like, it'd be nice if at the very end, just like with all the other like trap hallways, there's just like, oh, here's a lever to collapse that, like the entrance of that... Uh, like area, so there's no more boulders. To be fair, if if you if everyone wipes, then it stops. Yeah, I mean it's it's okay. Here's the way we can fix this: everyone die, and we'll just all run again. Because <laughs> that's cool. Hey, wiping is cool. Okay. <laughs> if dungeons have taught me anything, is that only good things can happen when everyone's dead. <laughs> definitely, everyone definitely. comes back to life. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> well, my mother it, died. Time to have my entire family commit suicide so we can bring everyone back. Yeah, that, that checks out. <laughs> some some kid out there is going to learn from Guild Wars 2 that if you lost a loved one, just kill everyone else, including yourself, and then everyone and all back, back to life. not the message from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> stay in school, kids. Uh, the last, well, the second last school. one, I guess, is the uncategorized, or basically just it's the Asura slash jumping puzzle. See harpy. that Asura thing kind of makes me sad, just about yeah. about uh, the future. But then again, they are Asura. Well, it's it's uh, you don't really know exactly what it is, but it's just like there is a crazy Asura. It is a giant Abandoned. place like Radisson, and there is that like at the very beginning. Uh, what's what what's the, the Asura like, lady? Yeah, basically the lady who's maybe, talking I'm to you on the intercom like, is like these giant Hold on, thighs I know what came this is. from under the second. floor and then crushed Radisson. That's what I'm imagining. Maybe. 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 We don't Did know. Did you crush it between your thighs? Yeah. Just giant thighs <laughs> came out of the ground. And oh, God. That'd be frightening. <laughs> but what, what do you guys think of like the, the, uh, the poison room? Uh, it's, uh, annoying. it's annoying, but like mechanics-wise. Is it solid? Uh, not really, because you just run, 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 back hill, run, back hill. Uh, and then later on levels, it's just a time limit, and that's kind of annoying. Yeah, because like later levels, you need to bring the crystals over to recharge yeah. the uh, the other things before you There's can turn the fan back on. So yeah. it it needs a little bit of improvement, but I mean, it's not the worst. That's another oh, one that's like not. it's close, but not quite there. Yeah. Um, I, I I like the the final fight. Just like, final you know, fight's one, fun. One, two, three, four. <laughs> then hit them all. Like with, I love the especially names, especially the names. Yeah, <laughs> the names. It's just this lonely Asura by, by himself with his cats. Crazy, crazy cat lady Asura. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's yep. really sad. It's kind of depressing, to be fair. <laughs> uh, and then, then the last one uh, before we end is the it's the Solid Ocean, the Jade Maw. Cthulhu, you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean? Let's Cthulhu? be honest. When I when I went on there, that is literally what I thought. It's very Lovecraftian, and it's yeah, Cthulhu. a lot of things are like just improper angles. Yeah. Well, that's that's the Jade Sea for you. That's how it was in the first game. Oh, okay. Like with dragons and tentacles coming out of there too. Or? Actually, there were dragons. Jade Sea was more blue, wasn't it? Then well, it's jade. Yeah, I mean, the color's not going to change. But there was a lot. There were a lot of outposts and stuff that were built into the jade that had a whole bunch of weird, sharp angles everywhere. Very cool. Yeah, and then there were actually were dragons that like looked so, like that that dragon. They looked like Chinese dragons. Yeah. Okay, I can I can see that. And they just added tentacles. Because yep. why not? What was that dragon you fought in factions? What's this do with face? Like Kumintang? Uh, That's not Kunavang. Kumintang. Yes. Yeah. Kunavang. Yeah. It's too close to the people's or the <laughs> national, nationalist <laughs> China's government party. Whatever. Whatever. But, I mean, I mean, like, it has an agenda. It's it's another fight where it's like you know the, you aren't directly fighting the boss. It's it's more you're fighting the ads and using the tools of the of area to fight the boss. So yeah, that. that that is another mechanic I do like, though it does get a little bit campy at times. Yeah, also, I hate how you can target um, summon things and ranger pets. Mm-hmm. So, like, he'll target the ranger pet, like, four times in a row. And just like, oh, won't make, make any... last even longer. Yep, and I think it can also target, like, engineer turrets. And pretty much anything that can be killed can be targeted. So it's really annoying when you have someone who doesn't know not to use minions or turrets or anything, and it just makes the fight go on that much longer. They should probably change that. Yep. So uh, that's we, we've we've final verdict on fractals seconds. close, but not quite there. Yeah. It's it, once they fix like I, I understand they'll never be able to make it perfect, but they can make it definitely better. Yes. And yep. for what it is, I I quite like it. I'm really happy they put this into the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think and, they need more rewards. It's got the potential to add more. Like you know, they'll just keep adding fractals to it right, that the will fact hopefully that go through the rotation. This is something they could add on to without having to completely wipe it clean and stuff. Yeah. Like instead that. of having to create a new story mode and right. three new explorable paths, they could just pump right. out three new fractals real quick and add them to the rotation. Yep. And this is a good way of experimenting with dungeon with mechanics called. and stuff. Yeah, mechanics and stuff like that. And I um, hope they implement some of the good things from the fractals into future dungeons. Yeah, like, it's like anything you'd like to bosses. see change with, like any any dungeons that you guys have done. We'll, I guess we'll just go around in a circle, like just uh, during any any boss fight to like this. Just please change this mechanic. I I don't know what to or like maybe I do. I mean, you mean just in fractals? Or are you talking about in general? Oh, just from in anything general, you've done. General. Any um, one boss fight that sticks out that's like this I really didn't like. Like, like I said before, I haven't done a whole lot of them. I would say if there was yeah, one in that your I've done, uh, it would probably be Colossus Rumblus. Like I said, just the idea is okay. I think just uh, communicating the proper information to the player is where they're lacking, and that could be enough to fix that. Fight. Or, or yeah. maybe just offering a closer waypoint. No, not just that. No, closer it's, closer it's waypoints close. are not necessary. I think that 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 is a that is a way to put a band aid on a bigger issue. The, the 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 mechanic of the fight shouldn't shouldn't Putting revolve a on an infection. Well, the mechanic of the fight shouldn't in, shouldn't involve like, well, they should just put the waypoint closer so that w- when I die, that I can just run back faster. Like that shouldn't be the case. Like I should have better ways of making sure that I'm not going to die and knowing that I'm not going to die. Yeah. Okay, so just just better tells on when, especially because it's so similar change, to to the Howling King. Like I said before, it's basically just a more bullshit version of the Howling King. So if you've seen that, because the Howling King is path one and Rumbles is path three. Mm-hmm. If you've seen that mechanic on the Howling King, you're like, oh, okay, I'm over here, I'm safe. And then you just get two hit and you're just well, like, that was I, I think one thing that would really help a lot in this game is something I, I thought that I had saw, seen early on, but I guess it actually it was something that um, I had actually seen in the Secret World that helps a lot that I think they could really incorporate into this game. And that is... Um, AOE indicators on the ground for when the enemies are going to be using like conal AOEs or um, uh, you know model based AOEs or whatever the case may be um, to let you know like th- what they'll do is they'll draw like a chalk um, outline kind of thing and it'll give you like say it's a, a circular AOE 
it'll give you that circle. Like, it'll, there'll be a chalk circle on the ground with another chalk circle coming out, letting you know when it's going to detonate, when it's going to happen. And the same goes for a conal one as well. You'll see the cone, and then you'll see, like, an animation of, you know, a line going up through that cone, knowing that when it reaches the end of that cone is when it's going to hit. And like so something like that in the game would help a See, lot. See, I like too. I like part of that idea. I like the um, drawing the outline on the ground mm-hmm. for the cone, but I feel like the way the combat system is set up, since most of those moves, even though they don't have a tell on the area, they have a tell on the move itself that's fairly obvious. So I feel like if you maybe only took half of that and made it just the cone on the ground, that'd be perfectly fine. At least yeah. it'd be way better than what they yeah, have. Yeah, like some kind of indicator yeah. to let you know where the effect of that ability is going to be. Yeah. Okay, so there's better tells and just like think maybe like it. a change in intensity, perhaps of like the 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 the, the outline gets gets bolder and bolder. No, because like the way I see it is like they have a te- they have red circles for every other AOE. Why don't they have it for that? Yeah, because with like enemies, not enemies, like other players using conal attacks, it's fairly obvious where they are because it's usually like just a big like flame breath thing. At least for most of them, if they're conal. So you can clearly see where you will and won't take damage. For this, you have absolutely no indicator. Yeah, I, I, the other issue that that's that's more permanent with Rumbless is he is so big, he's yelling at you above your camera angle, like point of view. Yeah, yeah. And so it's a, you can either I can either have my camera looking at his face, so I can see when he's doing the tell, but I can't see where, or I can have it aimed at the ground, so I'm seeing where the AOEs are. Yeah, at. and that's, that's where I kind of feel like like Guild Wars is almost there when it comes to how they um, show you, like, AoEs on the ground and stuff. Like like Shinboy said, like, it will show, like, a red AoE, letting you know where there's going to be an enemy AoE. But but unless you have your eyes focused on the exact spot that that tell on the, the um, enemy's model is actually happening, you have no idea when it's going to hit. And that's actually equally as important. And again, if you're going to have giant enemies like that, um, or if you're going to have other fights where there are, like, 30 enemies all doing stuff, and there are AoEs being dropped and everything... There needs to be some kind of a an indicator to the player on that um, AOE spot when it's going to hit. Right on, um, Shinboy. Mm-hmm. Any any one boss fight, trash fight, anything that you like to see changed? Uh, all of Jotun Path. <laughs> all right. That's mostly because it's buggy. Just uh, like just necessarily changed, but just fixed. Working. Just remove it. Working as intended. Oh, just okay. <laughs> Just re- start from scratch with that path. It's nothing, just like when you when, when you go right. in there, you just see the the three like you know qu- like the, the the path guys, and there's just a sign saying, "I'll be back in five minutes." On Lupicus, Lupicus is buggy as hell. Like he'll reset just randomly, and he is the least buggy thing about that path. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so yeah, Joden. All right, um, new Brahma. Um, so. Probably for fractals, I'll go fractals specifically because I haven't had much um, explorable missions. But probably okay. jellyfish because it's just fucking boring. I yeah, guess. it is. Yeah. I agree. It's so boring. Um, it, it, I think it basically signifies what underwater bo- uh, boss combat is, where it's literally just pressing one kite and around. press one. Right. Um, that said, I do want to say what I want to see more of is that halfway level boss fight for the snow mission for the Norn one where oh, j- just the idea of like where where the idea is it's environment changing rather than simply a bunch of new skills and it adds a lot more mechanics to it i just want to see yeah, more to the of point, that also mission. like the boss doesn't really do much damage to you directly right. it's that he moves you out of your safe exactly. zone and you start taking damage over time it, it's taking cold. advantage of the environment rather than simply strengthening the boss um, as well, I just want to see more from that. You know, like when you go into the forest, um, mm-hmm. and you need like natural lighting. I thought that was really cool. Just stuff like that was really cool. I'm surprised. I'm. I really, yeah, like you need to actually really, grab a torch or exactly. have someone using a torch. Yeah, that or like the well, yeah, the the dark underwater one where it's just like you have to pick up those those mini light balls. Uh huh. It simply looks really nice. I, they should do a lot more of that. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like all of my biggest problem with the way the dungeons are structured now is there's a lot of really interesting mechanics in both the puzzles and like quote unquote events in the dungeons um, as well as the cool mechanics in the boss fight. The problem is most of them are in a raw, like a yeah. solid three quarters of them are in a raw. They need to spread them out. 
I, I will say a lot of my like a lot of the favorite ones are definitely near the higher tiers of dungeons. And if the like if if they want explorables to be designed for level 80s, I mean like yes, lower levels can do them, but set that bar high. Um, I, I guess the one one thing it's it, this I actually recently came across this. Uh, it wasn't in uh, a dungeon, but it was just this. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a veteran. I think it was Maybe a like a champion or something. Yeah, I was, I was doing world completion basically, and it was just this this like there are these three guys I had to do. It was in um, Brisbane Wildlands. It was like uh, oh, way that to, godforsaken off, hellhole of an area. Yeah, off to the west where all those bandits are. There was just like this dynamic event to beat up these like two veterans and a champion, and the champion just had a, a, a description like you know they, they say like bleeds or, or yells or something. It just said tank. Mm. It was like okay, that's weird. I ended up beating up the two veterans, no problem. What the tank did is he yelled, and I would just immediately like I would get a reverse fear where I would just go straight towards him. And I've never seen that in any of the boss fights. That no, there, there's none of them in any of the dungeons. You asked me about this the other day, and I was like, that's weird. I've never seen that. And I, I think that would be a great mechanic to see in another boss fight. And maybe they're just like, you know, they, they have a, like a chest full of these things that are just like, we're saving these for more dungeons. But I just, I, that's just a mechanic I'd love to it's see like, in a fight. Polar has like that pull, but it's still, you can dodge that pretty easily. Yeah, and it's just like, it, it's again going to that, that idea of taking you out of your comfort zone. It's like, oh crap, I'm right next to the boss now. Um, one of the bosses, like uh, similar to Kohler, is the AC story. What's the uh, Aberdeen? Albert? Adelburn? Aberdeen. That, shut up. I'm tired. Aberdeen? You're going to visit the Night Elves? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yes. Is that the name of the Night Elves? Isn't it? Uh, Aberdeen is, is a place where, where Night Elves were in, in WoW. I thought oh, yes, that place is Portland. Portland. Yeah, I'm a WoW veteran. Shut it up. was destroyed. Though. Um. Anyway, just yeah, the the, the <laughs> just had a total burn in there. <laughs> yes, burn it to the ground. I, it's no longer no, there. No tears no, are shed. No moment of silence. Um, oh, but never yeah, mind then. Adelburn. That's like that. That was a fight where it's like everyone got pulled into the center, um, and, and and it's memorable, I guess, for people who are doing their first dungeon, or at least during the the start of the game and in uh, betas and whatnot. But that's yeah, yeah that's what I'd like to see. And... More cool mechanics that are yes. not in the raw. <laughs> yes, it's it's not that I dislike that they're in a raw because I'll do those anyway. It's just that not enough people will experience them, or they'll do the first. They'll do like AC, and be like oh, this is really straightforward because admittedly it is, and they'll be like oh, I thought they're going to be cool, interesting mechanics in these. I'm not going to bother with these anymore. And, or, or if I had to be pressed to to critique something that's in a dungeon, I'll just say fix the dredge. Just because there's like there's like five different types of dredge, and that's it. <laughs> and if you're doing three paths full of them, that gets kind of tiresome for trash. Yeah, give the give the dredge yeah. a break. Like retire them yeah, for a little yeah. bit. Look. Or just remove them from the game. Just or yeah, whatever. either or. <laughs> make make the dredge tonics so you actually have an animation. Or have, and you have it on. Or have like a world event called dredge genocide, and we get to wipe out dredge the dredge as an entire race. Dredge aside. But basically, the dredge tonic, you go into the standard arms out at a downward, like, 45-degree angle, whatever, pose, and you don't move, so you just levitate around, and it's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope that's intentional. Oh, oh, that, that, that video where the dredge were just circling those people. Oh, no. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, um, nightmares. Yep. Uh, I guess uh, we'll finish this off with some plugs. Uh, we uh, didn't get a whole lot of emails regarding the, just, like, the PvE commander. I'm disappointed in you guys. Yeah. Shinboy doesn't know what to do now that he has the commander icon. Yeah, Help him out. If you have then, an idea for a stupid thing to do with the commander icon, email it. And then just share it with us, and we'll tell everyone else, and then just more people will know of fun things to do in the game because all the fun things we do now are currently being expo- like considered exploits and gotten rid of. Like what? I can't climb around stuff in Lion's Arch because people abuse that in World War II. Oh, yes, true. This is why we can't have nice things. Yeah. And so we need to go to you guys to ask for more. That's such a dumb fix. But uh, I'm not, I'm not one to call like for, for everyone to send us. Exploits. I'm not one to call for invisible walls in an MMO. And in fact, I, I fucking hate when they implement them. But I, I really hate. But at those. the same time, if it means I can do my fucking stupid jumping around a lion's arch, put a fucking invisible wall out there. Just fucking do it. Let me do my jumping. <laughs> God damn yep. it! Just just make like it. Make make an invisible roof like two feet off. Just so, like when people try climbing up those things in in uh, 
World vs. World, they just hit the ceiling. I hate to say it, but like a squirrel that's trying to climb a bird's uh, feeder. <laughs> oh, speaking of invisible walls and dungeons, in Sorrow's Embrace, going back to that, I completely forgot about this. There's one event where like the dredge like cart shows up, and you can sort of cheese it by having everyone stand on top of said cart. But oh, thought, I remember that. We thought it was well, only not, like not one everyone. person. No, oh. I looked it up afterwards, and apparently you can have everyone stand. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was I was the only one up there, and I died, and then the cart disappeared, but my body was still just <laughs> levitating in the middle, like just in the air, just hanging there. And it then was magical. It was a magical moment. I sort of like my body once the thing disappeared, sort of went down to like a forty five degree angle, like head down. It was really weird and kind of scary. I took way too many screenshots. <laughs> yeah. Bugs All right, but uh, yep. Shimbo, any uh, plugs? Uh, no, I'll probably be doing Game of the Year stuff soon on my site, but that's still a couple weeks off. Yeah, you got you got finals? Um, yeah, yes and no. Um, because of the storm, they wiped out the finals period. Um, normally, you know, it's like a week and a half of just finals and no classes, but they just sort of extended the semester um, a couple days. So normally I would be done in like three days, but now I have another week and a half. Oh, man. That's not good. Oh well. Yeah, but once once that's out of the way, um, I'll hopefully be building a new PC over winter break and then pumping out some stupid video stuff. <laughs> Maybe uh, some of the stuff we do in Guild Wars with, with the guild. So, Very um, cool. Um, new Rama, any plugs you want to give out? Um, plugs for the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub. If you like PC games and you want to play them with other or people. Or apparently if you like um, Cards Against Humanity. Or cards against yep. humanity. Or so basically, if you're if you're a terrible person, join the giant bomb piece of game. Yes, I, I think that is accurate uh, for half the people I've met on there. So, yep. Oh damn! <laughs> Hashtag shots fired. <laughs> Very cool. Um, Duran, do you have anything you'd like? To I, plug? I do have a plug. Um, oh, whoa, whoa! Slow down there. <laughs> get, get ready, folks. It's going to be a barn burner here. Um, I love how we're all just so disinterested at this we're, point. <laughs> about the, about we, we've talked, we've talked it over. Um, we've all, all kind of decided. Um, even Cynic, even though he's not here, um, and uh, we're kicking Noob off the show because we're tired of his ass. Mm-hmm. So this will be this will be news last Goodbye, episode. Noob. Wait, 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 so wait, wait, wait. Everybody Sorry, just I was uh, the comic. What? Uh, uh, no, just no, don't worry. Oh, okay. Just, just so just keep sitting there listening. All right, <clears throat> Noob, don't no more tears. What? what? I don't know. Oh, Durant, go ahead. Go. In, case, in case anyone actually thought that was serious, <laughs> I would know. Um, no, the actual yeah, plug. The actual plug is uh, we talked about this couple of episodes back, probably three episodes back at this point. I feel like we Several should mention this at the beginning um, of the podcast, and people might have been still listening. <laughs> yeah. uh, we we, 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 we didn't think fans. this would actually happen because it had been so long, and because Noob is on our podcast. Um, but it turns out it's going right. to. We actually have an Arena Net dev lined up to. <laughs> Uh, be on and, the podcast. And we, you know why? Because they never actually vetted it. <laughs> That's the only reason why. Details. That doesn't okay, matter. Right. Yeah, we'll take we'll take it where we can get it. Uh, so, um, Josh Foreman, uh, who's a lead artist, I believe is is his title. Uh, no, he's, he's, not, he's not. He's not a lead, not a lead at oh, all. Okay. He's okay. just he's a level designer. level designer. Gotcha. He's just a dude. Level artist. Who, he's made tons of video games. So, um, but basically, he, if you he, if he's you walked walked around. Walked around Lion's Arch. Um, it, it, let me put it this way: If you were around for the Halloween thing um, in Lion's Arch, like he was a part of that, so you, you definitely have seen yeah. his work. Uh, the the statue that was destroyed, he, he, he actually he modeled created. the original, like the Lion's Arch yeah. statue. Um, and he also, also worked puzzle. on the um, the jumping puzzle. Yes, yeah. So you have him. He's he's the main dude responsible so, for the so basically. Puzzle, if I understood, Revan that has him to thank for him having to go out and buy a new mouse. Is what it comes down to, really. Uh, so we're going to have him on, on the show. It's going to be Inquisition is what it's going to be. <laughs> we're going to have him on the show, I believe. Uh, our, our plan right now is is to record this uh, um, next week. Um, so this this next uh, weekend. Um, and then the show will probably go up about two weeks after. Um, so what, what... Yeah, like a holiday special. Yeah, yeah. Thing, so right? we, it's, it's not going to be your normal yeah. three-hour podcast. Uh, we're shooting probably 45 minutes or so. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a Q&A thing. So, uh, but we're not o- the only ones coming up with the questions. So if you have any questions you would like to submit, that you'd like to ask, um, again, you know, try to keep them to the, if, if it's going to be like, 
Guild Wars 2 creation related, try to keep it keep in mind he is a level designer, so like don't ask him balance questions because right. he probably doesn't know the answer to that. Um yeah, yeah it's he, he won't be able to answer and, and probably he will not answer just because that's not his job. His or like job is PR related questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Anything about like creating worlds or just bottling things. His social He's security on number. A, a ton of other games. Yeah, <laughs> social security. Uh, uh, any, address. Yeah, and even beyond like Wars Two, if you have you know a question about maybe past work or size whatever the case might be, you know, um, what size broad does he wear? Be sure to submit those questions to our uh, email address. That is the. I'm assuming we'll make a form post. About We're going to do that too. We're, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, do we'll that probably well, add yeah. on to that, but uh, um, but it, but yeah. um, otherwise, you can also submit a question to the email address, which is the at gmail dot com, um, and we'll. All oh, right, wait, 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 before that, like us on Facebook. God damn it! Nope, God damn it! Nope, 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 you wonder why you're not allowed to be on that episode. <laughs> uh. Um. Anyway, though, so yeah, so yeah, send, send us your questions there, or or check the, out the uh, the yeah, giant bomb thread that we're going to create. Um, where we'll also be taking questions from as well, um, and we'll pull as many questions in as we can. Um, or what was that again? I, I guess when you guys do send us uh your, your question, uh, a better way, to, like a way to ensure it gets answered, is rather than just say like, "Hey, this is uh X, cool X Shadow Twenty Eight, <laughs> yeah, X Dragon uh, Slayer X." Oh, oh, yeah, it just, just add your name. It doesn't have to be your full name. It could just be like, hey, Chris. And your social security know. number. And your basically, basically yeah. Thurbleton Thurble yeah. just doesn't want to actually reference X Shadow Crosser X X420. X Sephiroth X. Plus, I get <laughs> yeah. aroused when I say people's names. Um, Use whatever name. Yeah, just be sure to include some kind of a, a name that we Pseudonym. can call you by. Pseudonym, too. Um, just Bill. That, that, that way you know okay. your question's being answered on, on the show. Um. So that's pretty much that. Uh, I don't think we have any other details really about that for right now. Um, if, if we do, that, that'll go in next week's show. Um, have you been doing much streaming? Uh, not as much. Um, Assassin's Creed 3, I haven't been streaming because actually um, I've, I've only been playing it. Like My wife is really interested in it, and so I've been playing it basically when she's available and she's just kind of watching me play through it. Um, and Far Cry 3 is a... Very graphically intensive game, and I'm afraid to stream it. Um, but my StarCraft, I will be oh, streaming. Got to man up. Uh, well, my actually, yeah. You, uh, one thing you have been streaming is the karaoke night, which has just been entertaining. I had, uh, yeah. I've, I've, you I've missed, missed the, last the last one, and arguably the yeah, best. Yeah, I've, I've missed the last, the last couple now because the uh, uh, two weeks ago was when I was sick, and so I just was not even up to doing. Well, anything. we don't have one every week. Okay, well, I just assumed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, because no, well, we decided against it because. Um, one, my school's network decided it hates VoIP clients. Oh, great. Um, and two, we figured if we did it every week, it would get stale. Mm, okay, okay. Right. Um, but yeah, otherwise, the other thing I, I will be streaming is um, I'll probably be streaming a lot of my StarCraft 2 play when I do that, the um, Heart of the Swarm stuff. So if you're interested in seeing somebody fumble their way through that who hasn't played in a while, then I'm, I'm still, I win some games here and there still. Um, what happened to Final Fantasy VII? Um, what did happen to that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> lots of new games coming yeah, out, it, it, so I haven't gotten back to that. I'll, <laughs> I'll probably hit that back up again starting probably next year at this point, like January or so, uh, just because I, right now okay. I got Assassin's Creed 3 and Far Cry 3 that I'm playing through, um, and I still got Sleeping Dogs that I'd like to get back to. I still got to get through Walking Dead. Um, I had plans of actually streaming Walking Dead this weekend, like all the way through, because I'm still only on Chapter 1. Um, but I didn't, I didn't end up doing that, so I'll probably do that next weekend. Where I'm just gonna I'm just gonna marathon okay. it. I'm, I'm going through all all of them. They were talking about it on Giant Bomb on I, believe, I think it was on the uh, most recent Bombcast about how like they liked having that break and they felt like that was necessary just because the game just wore you down emotionally. You're just gonna and go. So screw I that. just took that as challenge accepted, and I am going to just marathon through the whole thing. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll probably Ooh, be, be nice. streaming that. Um, like I said, probably next weekend. Boom. Sweet. I might watch your mental breakdown. <laughs> might have to tune in for that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, third. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I'll, I, I got two plugs. That's just really just uh, things, community things to uh, keep a heads up on. Uh, coming up, as uh, most folks know, is the, the Steam Christmas sale. Um, Shinboy, I guess, inadvertently hinted at this, but just there, there's uh, a lot of uh, Secret Santa stuff going around. 
And it, it, it'd it be nice. Um, I, I'm not sure if we'll do something with – does the Giant Bomb community do like a, an in-house? Uh, they, uh, well, they have Santa? a Steam giveaway thread I don't know. already that's just kind of always yeah. ongoing. Our PC gaming hub is doing Secret Santa. No, Steam Gifts is different though. Uh, that's Steam, the, that's, that's, that's actually that's a separate site. Yeah, the, the idea I have, the best bet, is – like that, that's you, there's good old games has stuff I'm sure and there's a couple of the game sites but like it's Steam is the one that people put wish lists uh, wish lists up there and just say like hey we're doing something for five dollars or less do that uh, with your guild get like anybody just, wants to sign just up just a warning about wish lists on Steam um if someone already owns their game and they had yeah, the wish that. list does not update so if yep. you're planning on buying a game please. Dude, yeah, it, it it doesn't it doesn't yeah, update, it, it, but it does tell you when you're going to purchase that game. You're going to like choose who to give it to you. It will tell you if that person already owns the game. Right. Okay. Okay, that's good. So it, it sort of safeguards against itself. Yeah. In that yeah. method. But yeah, it's it's uh, talk to your guild, see if if they want to do like an in-house um, Steam sale, just because we all like video games, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Especially when they're like five dollars. Scribble nuts. The one other thing I uh, wanted to just give a, a shout out to was uh, a guy has been posting on the Guild Wars 2 Reddit every uh, week or so that he's basically working on trying to get um, an achievement guide for make, for giving crafting achie- uh, guides. Or, uh, Wait, what? what? You know, getting the crafting achievement. The uh, yeah, achievement cra- for having crafting all the guide crafting achievement. achievement. Yes. Yeah. Basically, he's, he's putting out uh, crafting guides for each of the, the, the crafting profession or crafting things. Crafting, crafting. Um, he's done one for uh, cooking, jewelry, and the most re- recent one to come out was Artificer. Oh, so oh, we did the easy ones first. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, he, he is. He's going through and he's trying to get all of them done. Um, one thing to take a note from this is that usually as soon as you release the, uh, like, this is the list of things you're going to need ahead of time. They cost roughly this much uh, money, this much karma. He, go, he, he lays out in very, like, you know, easy to follow spreadsheet fashion what you need. Prices do change on the trading post. Um, one example was something went up 3,733% after he posted this price. <laughs> so clearly uh, people were watching. I wonder if you could pull, yeah, I wonder clearly if you people could pull like, the, um, the Guild Wars 2 Spidey API. Like there, There's also one that calculates how much you need for your legendary. And that pulls straight from the GW2 Spidey API for up, automatically updated market prices. I wonder if you could do that. Well, he he has like he goes back every now and then and says like okay after releasing this uh, a day or two later this is what the price changed to. Um, I did the chef thing like two weeks after he posted it, mm-hmm. and the prices the the prices hadn't changed uh, back to what they were, but the, a lot of the expensive stuff uh, like the bubble on it did end and it went back down to a reasonable price, and so I got like uh, I'm two out of the three um, done. I still got to get jewelry just because or no I still have to get artificing. Because that thing's really easy if you have dust. Yeah, uh, it's just he he recently uh, posted it, so um, I, I'm sure I have a lot of the materials in house still. But yeah, uh, his for for people who don't know the website, it's a WordPress. It's Quorthos Q O R T O S dot WordPress dot com. So, yeah. so that's crafting that's that, that's my plug. People cool. who want to get some levels in really quickly, use crafting. Cool. I'm Shock probably going to end up not wanting to play my engineer at all and just paying for all of my crafting levels. Because that name is too glorious to not have a level 80. What name is that? Home Char Runner. Oh, oh god damn it. <laughs> god damn it. Dude, I'm surprised. There's no way that it hasn't been taken yet. He, he took it. He, he took it. It's taken. Oh, no, it is yeah. taken by me. Oh, god. That's pretty good. <laughs> and someone else got Nas Char. So with that, um, I guess we'll end the, the, the Lincoln cast. Go get some shopping Ex- done. Yep, shopping gifts. Get yeah. games. Don't do not do it last day, man. I'm telling you. You do can just like, mail me. Do it like my family where we give our gifts. Um, what, December 10th, 12th? What? So very soon from now. Yeah. You can just oh, yeah. mail me T6 maths and all that. Yeah, noob. Don't, don't do it last minute unless you're like me and have Amazon Prime and do it last minute and still get it before Christmas. Okay, yeah. I, yep. I cannot do it last minute because I have to buy stuff and then ship it. Mm. Oh, wait, but but then again, what happens there's a nuclear war against Amazon between Barnes & Noble and whatever that other company that's dying called? Uh, the, all those companies are in Canada, so we're okay. <laughs>
But no, um, yeah. for those who don't don't know, I guess the one final thing is Winter's Day does start next Friday. Yeah, or really? time and, you're, and for being as close to it, we know nothing about it. Yeah, yeah, we, we it's we're, we're going to talk about it next week, I'm sure. But it's just it's it's Christmas stuff. Yeah, Christmas in Tyria. From what I yep. can tell, Dwina and Grinth are not involved, which makes me kind of sad. Wait, then what's then what do you do? Right, right. Anyway, what do we'll you... see in a week. We'll see in a week. That's what we will do. Did they confirm? Yep. Great, no. I don't know. They didn't confirm it, but it wasn't in any of the stuff they released so far. Like I said, we will see in a week. Right. All right. Well, uh, with that, bye everybody. Go bye. fuck yourselves. <laughs> I need to go to bed. I'm I'm actually tired. I, I don't I don't know where he's gonna cut that ending off, but all right. Bye.